Okay, it's working. It's getting there. It's not, it hasn't started yet. It says live on Facebook. I'm on our Facebook page. I'm not seeing anything just yet. I've just refreshed. There's something. Oh, my neck that cricked. Okay. An anniversary podcast. Where? Where? On the Facebook page. <clears throat> there we go, guys. <clears throat> I think we're good to go. John Chris is L. Some spam already. <laughs> spam? <laughs> yeah, we have spam from Mohammed that's, Rocky. That's Una. our friend, Mohammed. <laughs> I know him well. He's been listening for years. He Hello. is. Oh, why can't I see this? Am I not? Oh, page? Look at scroll, that. keep scrolling down. He's really spam. I had to refresh mine. I can't even see. Oh, it's there. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, live. There it is. Awesome. There is so much spam. Is there any way we can get rid of that spam? Because that's quite annoying. I can only see one. One spam. Uh, I need spam. I've got to go. We went shopping. Person. I don't know. How do you get rid of spam? Can you kick that to Does that, do I have access? Ban to from page. Her, her profile is locked. The lock. Do you want me to ban that person from the page? Yeah. You can. I've just blocked them, so I don't know whether that'll carry on now. The Muhammad one? Yes. yes. It'll block it for you. Oh, I can't even click on it, so I think you did it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I oh, couldn't. We did it up. again. No, I haven't seen it. Well, obviously, that's a level of fame right there. Once you start getting spammed, <laughs> that quickly, oh, yeah. somebody oh. actually turned on a bot to do something to your page. Wow! Yes. She's just come up with another one with the same thing. Oh no, we've got different names now. Yeah. Oh, bless you! Thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is just going to bring us more views, man. Let it run. So we've got 48 viewers, which is wow, crazy. Already wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Welcome, everyone, to the recording of our 10-year anniversary show. We are about to get started. Everyone, if you have a drink, you will need it at the end. I expect everyone to... Uh, no, I expect it's a bit harsh, but, you know, it'd be nice if everyone wanted to join in. Yeah. Well, it's a There's the punch, David. Okie dokie. Right. This is a normal show, so... <clears throat> Who would have thought when Tracy and I released episode one of the 100% unofficial Universal Orlando podcast way back on April 7th, 2011, that 10 years later, we would still be sat here talking about Universal Orlando Resort. Well, it's time to celebrate 10 years of the podcast and talk about what's been going on at Universal Orlando for the last 10 years as well. This is episode 449 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. We are live. For those people watching, we are live on video. All four of us, I can see my co-host while we record. <laughs> it is bizarre. <laughs> well, let's introduce everyone. I am not here on my own for those of you who are listening. I never am because that would be ridiculous. Um, so join me who has been with me by my side, putting up with all my crap for the last 10 years. The wonderful, my wonderful, wonderful wife, Tracy. Hello, am I not your good lady wife anymore? because no, you, uh, you were annoyed that I kept using <laughs> you. You did, so I got a lot. I love you, Ron. <laughs> and coming up next, our second second longest host, not including me, that was weird. That, that is, uh, he, after two guest spots, he actually officially joined the show on number 281, which was the first show of January 2018, and that is my good buddy, Chris. What's up, man? <laughs> hey. Ah, it seems like... A long time, but not a long time, if that makes sense. It really yeah. doesn't. Yeah, I know. It's weird. And our newest member. She's only been with us for a very short time. As a host, I will say that. She's been with us as a sponsor and a friend and all the rest of it for a long time, actually, at this yes, point. Yes, she has. But her yes. official hosting debut was back on 432. so only 17 episodes ago, back in December last year. And that is the Muggle of Mouse and Muggle, Michelle. Hello, everybody. I'm the baby. <laughs> so welcome to our anniversary show yeah i've got 55 people watching if that's one to make you bum any more squeaky um hmm. basically i had no idea what i was going to do to celebrate our 10-year anniversary and i've been panicking about it quite a lot because it is a hell of a momentous occasion it is you know i remember listening to a podcast about podcasting that's how sad i am and how much involved i got into this thing that i listened to podcasts about podcasting um, <laughs> that is rather sad the average podcast pod feeds is what they call like go disappear after 11 episodes so i think we're doing all right 
How we made it past two, I will never know. <laughs> Um, oh, it was actually dire. a tweet from Thomas Stidman that kind of spiked my interest and kind of got me going in a certain direction because he suggested getting former host and sorry, Tracy's fingers in the way. So I'm just trying to stand up to see comments. Former host and guests and stuff to pop in during the show. And I thought that's way too much work. No one's going to do that. I can't be bothered. But it sent me down a different direction. And I realized, but obviously, because we've been doing this show for 10 years, Universal Orlando Resort has changed substantially mm -hmm. in so the just, last 10 years. Hi, Ali. Thank you. Oh, Ali Beamer. Um, and so I thought I would invite former hosts, people who have contributed to the show, former okay. guests, and some other people to send messages in discussing what they think uh, about the last 10 years at Universal Orlando. And we're going to kind of riff off the back of that and discuss the last 10 years, basically, because let's be honest, I could talk about the podcast for an hour, but we're all here for one reason, and that is Universal Orlando. Oh, not for you being a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just giving them what they want. <laughs> Too late, Michelle. Too late. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Sorry. <laughs> it's the soft cider talking. <laughs> the soft. Wow. <laughs> right, back on track. So I have said I know how I can take over things. So you three, I want I you have to Jonathan. comment first <laughs> on each clip. Okay. Me, because otherwise I'll take things over. So we are going to begin with our former hosts, and we're going to go OG co-host at this point. Okay. The OG co-host. Okay. The one, the only, Mr. Hunter Fig. Ah. Oh. Oh. Hey everybody, Hunter here, coming in from the Grim Grinning House and Catacombs of Halloween Horror Nights podcast. Was asked to check back in for the first time in a little bit uh, with the old crew and give my opinions on whether or not I thought that the Universal Orlando Resort has improved a lot over the last decade. And I mean, heck yeah, <laughs> like there's really not even a question about it. Whether you're talking about the smaller additions, like bringing over Hollywood's Transformers The Ride 3D, or even, you know, I'm not a fan, but Jimmy Fallon, and bringing over like big new projects like uh, Reign of Kong, of course, Supercharged, the greatest attraction in the world, Hagrid's Magical Creatures, Motorbike Adventure, all that right there. Yeah, it's really no question. The parks have improved, everything's going great, and I cannot wait to see where the resort goes in the future. So, yeah, I, uh, I love it. Can't wait to talk to you guys soon. Bye. Oh, I know. Old voices. Oh, yeah. Nice to hear him. Yeah, I was gonna say it's so nice to hear him. My first question, Lee, is how much did you pay him for the Fast and Furious comment there? Because <laughs> come on, man. Not enough. Having edited all of these clips, Fast and Furious is going to come up a lot tonight, is all I will say. <sighs> <laughs> I'm out of here. This is gonna a drink all over the yeah, place. Yeah, I need to spread my coffee there. That's quite funny. <clears throat> mm. Anyone want to comment? We did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, it's just weird to think that there's what, how many episodes in? Seven. Seven. <laughs> so he's been, yeah, 10 years then. It's, yeah, it's weird to think that 10 years ago, we we're just getting to know him. Yeah, Hunter was a kid. He really yeah, was a kid and it was just, kid. oh man, it's it's not it just no, it hasn't been ten years. I don't believe it. But he's right. It's... The parks definitely have improved in the last ten years. They've oh, the half steps. Oh, but... Yeah. yeah, but that's how you learn is by making missteps. You know. It's, yeah, they're definitely um, different parks from ten years ago. ago. But... Absolutely. <sighs> have you two got stage fright or what? No, I am managing the comment section here. <laughs> Involved. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, can't tell you how many people I had to I've had to block already. Yeah, I'm, I'm catching them as well. Um, like personally, I like but, Jimmy Fallon. Oh, I love Jimmy Fallon. I told you guys you'd like it. I like yeah. it. I think I don't know whether it's because I went in with low expectations or not, but I think it's I think it's a good attraction. I think it's because you got a private show the first time. I mean, that's possible. Yep. Yeah. John Self has a quick question. How did you meet Hunter to start with? Um, I put, uh, I was putting out messages for people to come on and do trip reports and it was on the Diz boards, I think at the time and Hunter messaged me, I think he misconstrued things a little bit and thought was offering a guest host spot. 
Um, but when he said he was interested in the behind the scenes of stuff and how things worked, it kind of, I was like, that's, we always wanted to add um, an American on the show just to, to obviously, because American based part of boots on the ground because we don't get there all the yeah, time. Right. Um, he sent us a little clip in, like a, a sort of audition, I suppose it was, and we fell in love with him. And I'll be honest, Hunter became, it's weird because he became like a surrogate son to us because we, mm -hmm. he was like, a, he's about this, how old was he? He was about 17 or 18, 18 he at was. the time. So we kind of really became, like, mm -hmm. parents. Yeah, he was really young. Um, and we spent tons of time like outside of the podcast talking. Mm -hmm. and Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he was a big part of our lives. He was massively. Yeah. When he left and then came back and, you know, things ended up how he was. And now look at him. He's got his two podcasts of his own. He's uh, Yeah, he's doing well. Yep. That's awesome. He was a host when I first started listening to you guys. I know, because he was so. on when you came and you and Robin came on when we announced the sponsorship deal. Yeah. Okay, great. Shall we move mm. on? Yeah. Of course. Going OG co-hosts. Hunter did leave to go and work for the mouse for a Oh, bit. yes, went to the dark side. Yes, of all the places. And he was replaced by someone who we'd had on a couple of times, and it seemed the perfect match, and that is Mr. Darren Schmidt himself. <sighs> What's up, Internet? Darren here. Man, Ten years. Congrats, you, Yobi. Can't believe we came up with stuff to talk about <laughs> Universal for that long, <laughs> and best of luck to you guys for the next ten years. <laughs> Anyways, no. Nah. I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, Universal has done some incredible things in the last 10 years, and I think you guys will have plenty to talk about in the next 10 uh, with everything that's happening. The last year aside, I don't think that counts. Universal's been doing awesome things, uh, great strides in the annual pass holder program and their social media, restaurants there, uh, the events. Mardi Gras has just stepped up to an unbelievable level. I don't know if that's the same feeling this year. I don't know if you can blame, eh, you, you can blame something or, you know, I think the next 10 years, like I said, are going to be great. The last 10, the innovations that they've made, Hagrid's, Velocicoaster's coming. It's going to be awesome. And of course, very epic down the line. But until then, <laughs> night internet. And I'll see you all in the future. Ah. Oh, Darren, Darren. Wow. Yeah, it's weird. That what's up internet was nice to hear. The best, the, he, he was the only one of us that actually had a catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we tried and it just never came off. No. So, so, so piggying back, piggybacking off of the last question, I was going to ask this, but Julie just asked it. When did Jaren, uh, Darren join the podcast? I think it was around episode 13 or 14. He was supposed to join us at one, one week, and Tracy and I were violently ill. Oh, that, and we had to put off recording. That was fun. Um, so it was around that time because he came on, he did a trip report, and then he came on because we knew he was a big Halloween Horror Nights fan. Came on and covered Halloween Horror Nights 21 for us that year. And then, like I say, when Hunter left, it was like, we know Darren, we know he loves the parks. Get him in. And that's how it went. Mm hmm. But talking yeah, about what just Darren's all about there, yeah, definitely. The annual pass holder program at Universal is they have done everything that Disney haven't done. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Like free magnets, the free pins. Yeah. It's just two daft little things that you don't have to do, but people go mental for them. Yeah. Well, even their social media page is, it could be uh, frustrating at times, um, yes. but I think they do, I think they do a really good job over there. I remember... When I first started joining that page, there was an admin, Jessica Soto, I think was her name, right? Tyler Bowman's missing. <clears throat> I recognize no, her not, No, not. Well, That's Jessica. Tyler Bowman's missing. <laughs> why, 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 I just, why did that name come up? <laughs> Jessica something. Right. And she was the admin of the page and she would interact with you. It was really cool. It's like almost like interacting with somebody from Universal. Hmm. Um, and then, um, when she stepped down, it was, I uh, can't remember his name right now. But Matt Corn. Matt yes, Corn, the yes. Corn Man. Yep. Yeah. I just think it was really cool to have those voices coming out from Universal as opposed to oh, just, right. I think the Disney page is, is just, here it is, that's it, no interaction kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. it, was, it was a nice little change. 
Yeah. Well, and they're, they're funny, you know, like they interact in funny ways and yeah, they're a little cheeky, you know, it, it's nice. Some so. of the best things they do is actually, if you go between Universal and the, Hol- the Halloween Horror Nights Twitter, some of that stuff's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, cheers. But yeah, like when Matt was there, they haven't done it so much now, but when Matt was there, they really <laughs> embraced that fan community as well. Mm-hmm. Where they started to realize that there is there is a value in podcasts, there is a value in bloggers and bloggers and all the rest of it, and I think they've come on leaps and bounds since that because Disney don't seem to to do that as much. I know I'm going to feel like the people will be like, "Oh, here's Lee ragging on Disney again." It's what I do, but I just <laughs> I feel that Universal do embrace it more than Disney do. They do, and I don't know if that's because they it's not it's not as many people as we have over at Disney in the, in the pass holder realm. Like it's more manageable in the universal yeah. side. I don't yeah. know, but regardless, it's awesome. And even a little tidbit from the travel agent perspective, they also, the, the travel agent side of universal also has their own um, Facebook pages and social media accounts and things where we're able, they're constantly in contact with us behind the scenes as well, when it comes to educating us so that we can, you know, be up on top of everything to book vacations and stuff. They're just as a whole, I don't know what the movement, how, who started it, but as a whole, both on the pass holder side, the consumer side, as well as on the travel agent side, they um, really just ramped up their social media interactions and it's been phenomenal. It really has. Yeah. And then like Darren said as well, with the, the events, the events have got bigger and better every mm-hmm. year. Mardi Gras. Tracy and I were talking yeah. about it today. Uh, literally, as the day of recording, Universal have extended Mardi Gras again till May second. It shows you how, like we we've talked about before, that Universal should do like an Epcot food and wine thing, mm-hmm. and they've done it this year, and it's been an absolute smash. Yeah, and I hope that they take the success of this and try and incorporate it into Mardi Gras when Mardi Gras goes back to normal. That would be nice because you two have both been and, and and experienced it this year and had nothing but great things to say about it. It was mm-hmm. awesome, for sure. I loved it. I put that together with a real Mardi Gras, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> this will be double fisting on the parade floor. And it's like, how am I supposed to throw beads? So what? <laughs> you heard. Take your mind out of the gutter, dear. He's a thirsty boy. Right, moving on. <sighs> I've called the next group <clears throat> contributors. <laughs> So people you will have heard on the show that have contributed. I mean, that's a surprise, isn't it? <laughs> um, and the first one was our rumor person for a long time. She uh... was like the rumor queen at this point. And that is the awesome Alicia Stella. Automatic targeting systems, active. Laser <laughs> active. Congrats on 10 years of the podcast. That is incredible. And I am so honored to have been a part of it in any way. As far as Universal and the last decade, they not only changed what they were doing, but I think they changed what the industry does. Ever since Harry Potter won IP for a land, no longer a hodgepodge fantasy land, but one IP per land is the lasting legacy of Universal Orlando. I think Comcast has done a lot of good with the parks. Sure, there have been some uh, misses along with the hits, Fast and Furious on the whole. (laughs) Really great stuff. And even with the mouse kind of backing down down the street, Universal and Comcast are going full blast forward into the future. The future. Laser designators active. (laughs) Prepare to fire. Love you guys. Oh, that was cool. Awesome. I'm glad she did that because that when we had her on to do the T2 tribute. And oh, she, that was that, awesome. She was, I was like, oh my God, you are so perfect for this one you for. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah awesome. I don't even know how oh, I need it, to be honest. Not a clue. No. Not a clue. Um, Happy accident, I guess. Yeah. She's definitely right when it comes to the theme parks, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, should, she was one of the winners of our Seekender, wasn't she? She was, yes. Yeah, she yeah. should know the parks. Yeah. But as far as like one IP per land, you definitely don't, you look at Disney and that's Pandora. You wouldn't get, without the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you don't get Pandora, you don't get Galaxy's yeah. Edge. Yeah, they changed the game for everybody. They really did. Yeah. They really did. Oh, yeah. 
even looking over at Universal Hollywood, I know it's still Universal, but Universal Hollywood was always a bit of a mess. And now even they're going down that route in the limited space they've got. They've got Hogsmeade, you get in Super Nintendo World. I need to say land there. Mm. Super Nintendo World, and then even with like Super Silly Fun Land, Despicable Me. That's right, Gillian, she did. Bitch and his husband by 100 points. I don't think you'll see it go to like, uh, I mean, if you look at it, what's rumored for Epic Universe, it's that whole thing again. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait for Epic Universe. Oh my God. I know. Chris, you know when you were talking about being a listener before? <laughs> I'm being a reader right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it really, it really the comments is hard are really to watch. nice. To, they're really cool to read. I'll be honest. I know it's hard to watch the yeah. comments and pay attention to you. Sorry, Lee. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean it's cool. Uh, the only, I guess, the only downside of that is uh, you don't. I don't think we're going to see as many cool, um, you know, original lands that we would have seen prior. Yeah, I yeah. mean, which is which is sad. It's good and it's bad, right? Because you get IPs that you want to live, and you can live those fantasies out in uh in, in inside the your favorite theme park but then you also don't get some really cool you know creative ideas going out there creating your original theme lands i mean i could be wrong and epic universe could maybe do something or you know i mean they kind of did it with volcano bay right that's all original kind Should of thing I no i but, agree um, <laughs> but yeah it's, it's both good and bad good and bad no, i agree with you right there is, mm. it is a double-edged sword that because of like IP sell now, you only have to look at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, what was the last um, non IP attraction that either Disney or Universal built? Expedition Everest or, uh, in Orlando, let's say. Um. Mm, Rip Ride Rocket. <laughs> That's the only one I can think of. Asta. Yeah. No, Rip Ride Rocket. When was. Expedition Everest was uh, ooh, uh, that was prior. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, Rip Ride may be the latest. Yeah, I think you might be right. Oh, you're gonna have to ride it then, Michelle. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your enemies close. About Universal, <laughs> well, I have written the last, the last non IP attraction that was put into an Orlando big theme park. Disgusting! Disgusting! like ips though like i really part of the reason why i love universal so much and and disney but universal especially is because of the immersion i like being put into my favorite movies and and films and you know things that i that i'm obsessed with walking into diagon alley and being a part of yeah. the harry potter universe is amazing i like that i i prefer that over over just some random roller coaster that has no story behind it but so i'm not like i know i'm not everybody movies, right yeah oh. and look at I disney do. like pirates of the caribbean i agree john no thing like, i still adore that and that's the other way around you don't get those movies without that ride and everyone that's true like, haunted mansion haunted man exactly that's yeah. i mean look at that one yeah the haunted but they're still there's even though those stories were created I guess kind of after the ride, there's still a story. Rip ride, there's there's no story. It's just a thrill. Yeah, well, so I, we like, I like things that have a story behind it. So I guess rip ride would be the one exception where they're just like, ah, just put it there. I think talk the about hostas. The if time, you build it, they will come. It was a case of just putting something in the park to boost it a little bit, and and why not put a roller coaster in? It's cool for the skyline, I guess. No, it's awful for the skyline in fairness. If you look, if you look at Universal Studios Florida coming all across from Men in Black, and you've got that big thing, oh, it's horrendous. At night, no, I, I, I think you're right though. You just mentioned something about throwing a, like a roller coaster inside of Universal because, as a kid growing up and going to the parks all the time, Universal was kind of like that. Yeah, there wasn't enough thrill rides for me, right? Uh -huh. I was at that age where you want to just ride, thrill ride, thrill ride, thrill ride, Islands of Adventure came around and you're like, come on, why would I go to Universal when I can go to Islands of Adventure? You have all these cool roller coasters, you got water rides, you got all this awesome stuff there. So, I mean, to your point, Lee, I think probably they threw it in there just to add some more thrill and adventure inside that park. Relatively cheaply. Mm. Yeah. I had a couple of questions. 
We've got three with four with three. Okay, well, shut up. That could have been the first half, one. Half an hour in, and I've we could have been finished the first one. So shut up. Shh, shh. Jesus. Go on, someone. Right. So, Chris. There we go. There we go. <laughs> We're in one of those. One of those squares. <laughs> so, he uh, <laughs> wants to know what we are drinking. Old boot. <laughs> Water. Well, that Michelle. Water. <laughs> I'm at work in the morning. I, I'm it's just, like half ten at night now. Even I'm drinking water. I finished a coffee, but I do have a nice pot for later. Oh my god! Yes. And? Um and um, hang on, I need to scroll down because everybody's talking. Um, have we ever done a show where you've challenged each other to get song titles, certain words, movie titles, etc. In? Um, I have an admission. No. no, they haven't. I have multiple times. Yeah. But it is um, something we talked about very recently, isn't it, Tracy? It is. It is, actually. Um, but yes, my record so far is I once got 42 BTS references oh into a show and they got past him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> twice. How do I not notice that? <laughs> anyway, yes, on. Yes, moving on. We'll move on to... Uh, wasn't yes, old boots, cr- uh, Chris. Quite a lot, and it's, we've gone back quite a while. And mm. that is Eric Davis. Ah. Hello, Lee and Tracy. It's me, Eric Davis. If you remember me from the good old mice chat days, bad old mice chat days, uh, I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> but just want to share my thoughts on the past 10 years. Incredible things have happened over the past 10 years at the University of Orlando Resort. I remember when Diagon Alley opened and just the incredible like high that we all experienced exploring that land for the first time. Obviously riding the rides, you know, taking in the shops, the details, everything. And then how befuddled we all were when Jimmy Fallon opened. We're like, well... No one, no one has a perfect record. And then how incredibly confused we were when Fast and Furious opened. It wasn't Fast or Furious. But regardless of like those two things, like you look at Scott Kong Skull Island and how incredible it is. You look at everything else, obviously, they've done and how incredible it is. I don't want to be a negative Nancy. But it's been an incredible journey. And obviously, like there's so much more to look forward to at the resort. Obviously, with all the hotels that have, you know, that are opening, you look at the way they're going to expand the property in the resort, and you're looking at these new lands that are coming. It's a bright, beautiful future. And obviously, there's another 10 years worth of content coming. So I wish you all the best. And I, again, I look forward to another 10 years, the unofficial Universal podcast. Oh, to Eric. I so know. It's so nice to hear his voice. Putting this together, it was actually really good to, to, to connect with a lot of people mm. I haven't spoken to in such a long time. Yeah. I think that is going to be the legacy of the last 10 years of Universal Orlando, is putting them in a position financially to really go at the Orlando market and build Epic Universe. Yeah. Everything mm-hmm. they've done has brought in the money for them to do what they are doing and what they will continue to do in yeah. the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's very true. When I, when I first went to Universal as an adult, which was almost, uh, let's see, three, almost seven years ago now. Um, Dr. Eagle, I'm watching you. <laughs> um, it wasn't really a, a thought about staying on property like that wasn't as big a deal as it is when you when you go to Disney and them them really building this to be a destination you know an all-inclusive type destination with everything in one spot so you don't feel like you need to stay at Disney and just hop over for a day um, making it its own place has really evolved tremendously um, over the past well, seven years since I've, since I've been a part of this universe, but, um, I think that's just going to be a game changer continuously, especially with Epic universe, please bring a Harry Potter hotel, please bring a Harry Potter hotel. I know that would be amazing. Yeah, we've started, I don't know whether it's because of the podcast, because obviously we feel like we should stay at these hotels, but I'm starting to get to a point where I want to stay on property more and more. Good. You should. Yeah. You You should. It's a totally different experience. And I can't, I can't, people don't understand that until they do it. You know, Mm. once they do it, they're like, oh, okay, you're right. I get it now. Um, So it's, it's amazing. It's not like at Disney where even though you're staying on property, you still might have a 20 minute bus ride to the parks. Yeah. Yeah. Universal. It it really is. You really do feel like you're in a bubble and it's, and it's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are some great hotels. Yeah, I'm so let's face it, Sapphire Falls. And depending Grand on Bay. how October trips goes ahead this year or next year, Dockside, I'm really looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
a part of Fino one day, maybe. Yes. <laughs> so we can join Michelle in the one percent group. That's, 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 that's lowly folk. <laughs> if it's cheap, we can go by myself. I will happily do a solo yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can. I mean, you can stay in my room, Tracy. Yeah. Uh, there you go. What the hell? <laughs> Lee, you can stay with me down the street at the Hojo, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. <laughs> down there, it's cheap, but we'll have more money to spend on food. Exactly. Joking, I'm spending all your money. You'll have none. Moving on. <laughs> a voice again we haven't heard for a very long time who was, uh, used to do a little segment called On Location. Oh, thank you, Ali. You have a PR uh, but... friend who can help book a hotel. <laughs> there. And that is Mr. Gregory Ryan. <laughs> ah. Hey everyone, Gregory here. The last 10 years at Universal Orlando Resort has brought massive changes. And I've been lucky enough to have a front row seat for many of them. Thinking over it, I keep coming back to the overhauls of food throughout the parks and city walk, led by chef Steve Jason. Every new offering in city walk has been better than the last. And as we've seen most recently with the greatly expanded Mardi Gras food offerings and tribute store treats, Food is coming to the forefront of everything the resort is doing. And the alternative dining options like vegan and vegetarian options continue to improve. I just can't wait to see what 2031 is going to look like. That sounds crazy. Whoa, that's, that's scary. <laughs> oh, wow. We actually got to see Cinematic Celebration with Gregory when we were we over. We did. Oh, that was lovely. We? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've said I wasn't doing this, but... Um, yeah, the food at the resort has come on leaps and bounds. I think back to mm-hmm. our trips prior to doing the podcast, and there was nowhere you were like, I have to eat there. Like yeah. City Walk, definite. Yeah. This year's Mardi Gras was a testament to that. I mean, the food was... So good. It was so good. It was, I mean, I, I literally was talking to a friend who's planning to go up there, and he's like, it never been before. And I was like, hey, just, just go buy two lanyards. Just go eat all you want. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, their, their, their food there. I mean, obviously everything's not the best in the world, but they kill some areas there. Like for me, I've said this before, Strongwater Tavern, Sapphire Falls. I know you had an experience with some of the food, but to me, and I tell people it is like top three restaurants slash tapas bar, or whatever you want to call it. I've ever been to not at universal, not in Orlando anywhere. Like wow. Hi, service, Chris. drinks, food. Yeah. And I give it to them. Like, and Alexa feels very strongly about that too. We just have such a great time there every time. Um, and that's crazy to come from a theme park hotel. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know. It really is. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look at like City Walk is definitely where the, the things have come on leaps and bounds. We go now and it's like, where do you eat? Big fire, anti-heaters. Not enough, not enough days in the vacation to yes. eat anywhere. <laughs> There's so many. We still haven't eaten yeah. a Bevo yet. For all we had a bad <sighs> time at Toothsome last time, I still really want to go back. In fact, Jade's holding me hostage that if we don't go and get a milkshake next time we go, she's never going to speak to me again. And that's like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, which do I do? Do I take her or do I not want her to speak to me ever again? Crazy, there's, there's a- your out right there. <laughs> <laughs> Great time for me. Hello. Thanks to you, Chris. Tachos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were good. Yes, they uh, were. But even still, tachos. Food, still yes. really good. Um, I, st- I actually do want to try the food out at um, Monsters Cafe. You mm-hmm. look at the RIP too, the stuff we had in Cafe La Bamba was really good. The, the stuff at Scare Actor Dining was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was really good. But like you said, Chris, it's still a theme park and you're still going to have that burgers and fries and stuff because people sometimes, they just need something to grab quick, refuel yeah. and on you go. Do yeah. you know what? For an in-park grab and go place today cafe is outstanding oh. that is restaurant quality grab and go food that place. yes it <laughs> is i wonder what i like best it is probably the place we've eaten at the most in the last i would possibly say the last 10 years and it's only been open for about a year <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> i adore the place yeah um, Julie Klein says Universal missed a trick with no character meals, et cetera, in the parks. Disney must make a fortune on that. And we've said that before, too, that yeah. they really that is such a huge money maker over at Disney. And it's it shocks me that Universal hasn't picked up on that more than they do. I've said yeah. before when we went when we took the kids in 2009, we did the one at Confisco Grill and it was Spider-Man, um, Cat in the Hat, Thing 1 and Thing 2. 
think there was somebody else, and it was the food was phenomenal. The character oh, interaction yeah. was amazing. It's and, but, still one of my favourite all time meals. That. And then we did the superstar character breakfast over at Cafe La Bamba. It was all right. It wasn't as good. And, and it was all right. Um, but yeah, it's not something they've ever really managed to make stick. Even they did that Marvel dinner, didn't they, recently over at Cafe? Not, yeah, four, four, and four. even that never really stuck. I went to that, remember? Oh, yes, yeah. you did. Yeah, for the podcast. But it was mm-hmm. okay. It was okay. It wasn't, you know, amazing. Um, it was cool to see the characters there, and it was great that they're all, like, interactive characters that would talk to you. But, yeah, it wasn't anything that, like, blew me away. Still waiting to do the uh, the Grinch one. Every time I've tried to, you know, so go good. and do it, it's sold out. I always do it too late. So yeah. this year's going to be the year. We're going to do it this year. And I know Alexa's listening right now, so I'm on the hook for that, especially. <laughs> I'm on the hook for a thousand things right now. So little tip, Chris, with it just being the two of you, it's pretty easy for you to walk up, even if there aren't any tickets available online. Okay. It's pretty easy to walk up and they'll most likely let you in. Okay. Well that Chris and I did that. Not this past year, but the year when before. When it was sold out? It was completely sold out. But we walked up since it was just two of us and us being AP holders, we walked up and said, Hey, you have room for the two of us and they took us right in she showed the ap pass and her portofino hotel they're like come on in <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know no i gotta if if i mean i'm gonna try this year to do it way ahead of time but that's a good tip i will keep that in mind i mean yeah. it probably wouldn't work if you have like a family of six yeah you know and you walk up with your brood of you know, strollers and everything. i don't even but know two people. people yeah no. yeah um, the minion breakfast that they used to have was really good. I've done that one a few times and I enjoyed it. I don't know why it went away. I, uh, Royal Pacific. So Sapphire, wasn't it? I Sapphire. did it at Royal Pacific huh? the first time I did it. And then I did it at Sapphire the next time I did it. Was it like Luau themed, right? Weren't they dressed up as that? Or is that a different? Not the time that Sapphire? I did it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> anyway, moving but, on. Kelly, yeah. Kelly's. Uh, Kelly Woods chimed in and said the whole resort's gotten way better for food allergies over the years too. Long gone are the days of packing all of her food for every trip. Yes, so I that's know, good. Kelly, yeah, so yeah. Yes, definitely. And, yeah, and, and vegetarian and vegan options are Unless way you've got better. A fussy vegetarian who won't eat mushrooms because they won't, won't eat vegetables or anything. <laughs> oh, oh. If I was a vegetarian. Yeah, moving on. Um, another contributor uh, we haven't heard of for a, quite a while actually. Tristan, like, yeah, who is it? The lovely Maureen Deal. Aww. Hi, this is Maureen Deal with Autism at the Parks. First, I'd like to say congratulations to the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast on your 10 years of providing excellent information, tips, and experiences to your listeners. I've noticed that Universal has evolved in the last 10 years in several areas. One of the areas is that it appeals to more guests, not just coaster enthusiasts. There's something for everyone in the family. This includes better rides like Escape from Gringotts and Hagrid's Ride and even Fast and Furious. Also, there are many more hotels that are affordable yet aren't cheap in style and aesthetics, especially Cabana Bay. And finally, another aspect that I've noticed that has evolved over the last 10 years is there's better options for dining, especially in CityWalk. Most of these restaurants have reasonable pricing and excellent service and great food. And congratulations again, you UOP, on 10 excellent years. That's a good point, actually, she's just brought up, that mm. none of the restaurants are expensive. No, that's very true. So I remember going in 2013 and eating at Mythos with Darren and Eric and the kids. And Darren was always put off going to Mythos yeah. because it's like, oh, it's Mythos. It's the best theme park restaurant for 200 years running. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of reach thing. And we went and he was like, that wasn't anywhere near as expensive as I thought it was. Yeah. That, that, is, so, that is so true. I would never go there with like one, the, the family when I was younger, just because it's like, no, that's an upscale restaurant. We can't go there. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's pay $12 for a pizza over here then. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't no, it's not. Anywhere. No, it's great over oh. there. Yeah. No, oh, so nice to hear Maureen's voice, though. It's been too long. I really like Maureen. <sighs> I would, I would agree her. with Maureen's first comment about more to do at the resort for like a wider range of people i think universal at the beginning of the 2010s i think they were gunning for that market of families Mm. and i think they've realized that they can't compete with disney at this point and i think you look at hagrid's kong 
the Velocicoaster. Mm. That's right, Jeff, I said it. Um, <laughs> I think they'd really like now that, that full family like with kids market isn't, isn't their thing. No. And why even try? Let Disney have it and let's concentrate on what we do and what we do well. Yeah. Yep, they have specifically said that to um, to us travel agents in our training sessions that, you know, this is not the place for, not that they, not that they can't come, you know, not that they're not welcome, but they're okay with the fact that this is not Disney. This is a, this is a different thing. So they're totally okay with that fact. Yeah. By the way, there's a comment in here, which literally was pulled straight from my mind. Jillian was like, Oh, I miss autism at the park segments. And I, I think we need some updated ones for the, uh, the most recent rides. That'd be awesome. Maureen. Yes. It was always a, like, it was always fun to like hear her just talk about the ride, you know, give all the information about it and then say, if it was too wild for her or not, you know, it's like, this is not my <laughs> style, but it's a good ride. It was always, uh, <laughs> it was very soothing for some reason. Yeah. Maureen's awesome. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. But yeah, I don't think Universal are going for that market at all. And I'm glad they aren't. I'm glad they're prepared to stand on their own two feet and say, do you know what? This is what we are. And if you don't like it, off you pop down the road. Well, that's it. And yep. the thing is, the whole, the whole of Orlando, the theme parks, would just be very samey if they all carried on doing the same yeah. stuff. So, yeah. yep. I love I think you can tell the difference in like the stroller parking areas too. Yeah. Like when you go to Universal, stroller parking is like three strollers. You go to Disney, it's like 300 strollers. <laughs> yep. Yeah, leave your kids at home. We don't want them. You don't want them. Yeah, we don't want them. <laughs> you don't want them. <laughs> I'm out too late, but you know. What? <laughs> 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 I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> Which is interesting because Universal has the better child swap system. Well, yeah, they didn't. We got the same one back. I think it's because they realise that people want to go, and they're like, I'm not letting my kids hold me back. So, kids, you just stay in the child swap rooms. Yeah, you watch the stuff. cartoons. Or if maybe it's because there's not that many kids going, so they can handle that. Like if that was at Disney, like 700 parents waiting in a room to like swap on Everest. That's probably very true. Yeah. You know what they need? At the front of the park, they need a kid's soft play area. You know, like an Ikea. As you go in. Like a child with, with, with. Child care workers, yeah. Yeah, if you want. I mean, yeah. she wasn't even going up, down that route. She just wanted the play area. Extra deep ball pit, they'll never get out. <laughs> You're trying to get out of one of those things. Anyway, moving on. The Note last... to self, don't let Tracy babysit your kid. <laughs> no. Or let her babysit if you don't want the kid around. <laughs> the last of our contributors, and who is a current contributor to the show, you hear him every week, uh, every other week, sorry. Ah. Awesome Seth Kaberski. Oh. This is Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides and All the Little Things. And I simply cannot believe that it's been 10 years since the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast got started. A decade ago, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade was only a few months old. And I honestly thought that the Universal Orlando Resort had reached its peak. I, I didn't really see how things could get that much better from there. But little did I know what we had in store for us. Diagon Alley and Volcano Bay, much less all the new hotels and the exciting things that are coming in the future. I've got to admit, I miss some of the little things about the old Universal back in the days where you could have the park almost all to yourself because there was so little attendance and could go and ride attractions like Jaws. But overall, I'm amazed at the way the resort has grown and the way the podcast has grown right along with it. I've just seen in the comments there, Jimmy's yeah. asked when did Seth start contributing? I don't know. It's been I a long time. finding Seth when I was looking for people to have on the show, when he was writing the guidebooks for Universal before he joined touring plans, before mm. they were the unofficial guides. Um, and we had him on then, and then he came back, and I think he did the walk, the walk with Darren for Hogsmeade because it was just before we were going to the parks and I didn't want any spoilers. Yeah. Um, but as far as little, th- like we had him on every year, we used to have him and Jim Hill on quite a yes, to did. talk about new stuff. As far as little things, a couple of years at this point, I think. It's got to be over three, four years. Really? Wow. It's a staple. Yeah, because I was I was hearing him do little things before I was even on the show. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And I would laugh because 
there would be like jokes about like how many additional things that, you know, he would add himself to that he's working on <laughs> yeah. I, I, before I was even on the show. And I would crack up at that. I was like, yeah, but we always look forward to little things. I mean, I still I look forward that. to it. That's one of those things I can still enjoy on the show. Cause I can hear it. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Those things that there are so many little things yeah. happening in the parks constantly that we can't keep up on that. And that's who knows that better than. Sam. Yeah. He's an awesome person as well. He is. He's that's become so that's ticket holder number one right there. It is, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. He's become a part of the team. You know, he was yeah. part of the weekender doing the sea I was, was going to say, I'll be forever grateful to him when I all of a sudden dried up in Zeus yeah. landed and he stepped in and gave some additional facts and he had my back. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, even, even so, when we were there, and I think it was right after the, uh, the Grinch or the tour that you were doing in Seuss Landing where we rode um, Cat in the Hat, and it was me, Darren, Quincy, and Seth, and we're just riding, and Seth was awesome because while you're going through there, he's like an encyclopedia, so he's telling you little facts about little things throughout <laughs> the park, and I was just there absorbing it. I'm like, okay, just keep on going. I want to hear them all. Like he's got to know awesome. more about those parks than anybody. Oh, God, else. yeah. 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 And the fact that he still has a passion for it, having to scrutinize it constantly. Yes. Works. Yes. And, and while we're live, I do need to say that when I see you, Seth, I do, do owe you a drink because I realized that I never replaced the drink of the glass that I smashed. I woke up in the middle of the night the other day, went, oh, my God, I didn't do it. I owe you, I owe you a drink. We <laughs> <laughs> strong water for our little mini meetup last February. Tracy smashed Seth's glass. I hadn't been drinking. Oh, my Fish gosh. Drink. Oh, she had. I too. She was two drinks. That was it. Our hotel room that made Jade laugh. Two I don't, it, punches or two regular drinks. Um, it was two. Uh, what's what's the bar? Strong water. Haven't two strong water, very strong cocktails. Uh -uh. That's all. Oh, uh, yeah, but I didn't eat my dinner, did it? Because it was disgusting. Two cocktails. They'll get, they'll get you good. Like, they'll get you good there. I had two. <laughs> yeah, but I, I kind of got a bit of a rapport with her. And she was like, oh, I'll just Strong give you a bit extra. She just flashes her Grinch tattoo everywhere. And she's like, oh. yeah, that was it. That's what I thought. <laughs> okay. Mm. Moving on. On. Two new contributors to okay. our show. A part of our new Halloween Horror Nights podcast. Ah. So first up, we have Amadi Willett. Hi, Lee and Tracy. Oh, it's my gosh. Cool. Can you believe it? Ten whole years of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. I, I can't even believe it. I know I haven't been here for all 10 years of it, but I've listened to every single episode. So I feel like I have, you know, <laughs> but I just wanted to say congratulations to you guys. And honestly, thank you so much for deciding to create this podcast because with this podcast, you guys have created such a an amazing community and family of people who are all interested in one thing and that is Universal Orlando Resort. It's really fantastic how that happened and we are so happy that you guys did create the podcast and that turned into such a beautiful community. Thoughts on the past 10 years of Universal? Well, I mean, I've been going to Universal since I think I was like nine years old and it has changed so tour. much in that time. <laughs> but in the past 10 years alone, I mean, look at what we lost, but also look at what we gained. Like we obviously lost amazing rides like Jaws and Disaster, but we gained rides like Transformers and both the Harry Potter sections. And, you know, Universal is constantly changing. There are things that are happening every single day that changed the park, especially now, you know, with COVID and everything that's happened, that has changed the park so much. And with this new park coming, who knows? Who knows what other changes are going to be happening inside Universal Studios? But yeah, I can't wait to see what happens. Can't wait for the next 10 years of this podcast. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to host Rush of Fear. It has been so fun already, and I'm so excited for this Halloween Horror Night season. But yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Congrats, guys. <laughs> Love you so much. Oh, Maddie. Oh, that was so muddy. <laughs> it was. I love her. Still, um, on our RIP tour, mm. it was about 10 to 2 in the morning. We'd just come out of spending probably half an hour in the tribute store. And I turned around, and Tracy's 
legging past me. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell is she going? <laughs> and the next thing, her and Maddie are proper oh, yeah. rough hugging each other yeah. in the corner. That's my girl. Yeah, Maddie's awesome. She's the sweetest. She is, oh. and she's right on about the community <laughs> you guys have created. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. constantly reminding Lee that he is loved um, and that this thing that he does that he puts so much work into is not just about universal at all it's about this community this family of people that he has created and brought together and uh, he can't he can't stop now <laughs> because <laughs> the family relies on you you know and maddie is one of those maddie is is somebody that i met up with at the opening of um hagrid's and did not know who she was other than the fact that she's in the producers club and we waited all day in line for eight hours together and, you know, even took a nap on each other's shoulder waiting in line. Um, and then every time I go to Universal now, I happen to run into her on the, the water taxis and it's awesome. So it's, it's been great, even though I'm a host now and it's surreal still. Um, I still have to say that, you know, thank you to Lee because oh. it's not just about us, really. The, the family is amazing. It's a good job my camera's zoomed out as far as it is at this point. <laughs> so she's only been gone for three years then. She started in two, when she was there. <laughs> <laughs> she just posted the other day that she's uh, <laughs> hiring when for yacht up. captains. I was yeah. like, can I moonlight? <laughs> I nearly shared it. I would love to do that job, I think. I, just, I could so yeah. see you doing that, Chris. I would... <laughs> I'm gonna. That's it. I'm quitting today. No, you. Yes. Would, you know how everyone talks about that skipper we had, the one that plays all. That's everyone singing on the boat. Yeah, yeah. That is Chris. Yeah, like the most social person I know. <laughs> it's the perfect job for you, Chris. It really if, you're, is. if you're nice to the captain, you may get some uh, some juice on the boat too. So you know. Uh, yeah. And then when we oh, gonna, <laughs> spoil something for the weekend there, but I won't. Oh. I've, sorry, I've forgotten anywhere. Anyway, moving on. Uh huh. That was only we've we've got one here, and we just saw one there. So of course we have to round it out with Kenneth. Hello, this is Kenneth from well now from Russia Fear and from the vlogs. And when I think about how much Universal has changed over the last ten years, it's really incredible because it's basically gone from the immediately post Harry Potter version of the park and then grown just basically universal as we know it today has happened in the last 10 years and all thanks to well some some might say thanks to harry potter but i'll give the credit to you guys <laughs> it's all thanks to you congratulations you guys <laughs> we've seen the resort grow so much so many hotels new attractions a whole new park is coming the resort has changed so much it's gotten so much better and you guys have been right there covering it shining the light on it and it's it's really incredible and congrats to you guys for for being here for so long it's been awesome oh i love kevin awesome. yeah um yeah i think it, mm. it, it is harry potter at the end of the day isn't it i think that's the one thing you've got to you've got to thank for where universal is right now because without that it wouldn't put they wouldn't be on the map where they are can you imagine if disney had have gotten it no 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 it would uh, not be the same. It would have really hurt Universal. I'll tell you that much. Yes. Yeah. Because Universal, like, and it wouldn't have been the same. No. 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 Absolutely not. Well, I think it's out there. What you, what Disney were wanting to do mm -hmm. with it, and they wanted to yeah. do like a magical creatures, something or other. It was like really pop. Wasn't that like an Expedition Everest oh, or Jonathan. Expedition uh, Forgotten, something like that YouTube channel that did uh, the whole thing on it? Yes. It was really weird. Yeah, and then Universal, but it's like. Uh, Universal went to JK and went, basically, you do what you want to do. We trust your judgment. And without that was that's always the thing that when Universal get the people in that created that thing and do what they do by creating amazing themed lands, but be led by the person that created that thing in the first place, that's the that's when Universal are at their best. Yep. You yeah. look at Diane Alley, you look at um Hogsmeade. I'm going to struggle to come up with anything other than that at the moment. <laughs> Fast and Furious. I mean, uh... yeah, it, it is a struggle because it, it is a, a double edged sword because it yeah. does seem to be that the, the two part of lands do get the most attention. 
but then I think if you look at Velocicoaster now, I guess that's maybe not maybe not so much because that thing looks amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, as time passes and new rides get created, you'll start deviating a little bit from that. But at the end of the day, the bread and butter is Harry Potter and and those parks. And we know that. Um, I think with Epic Universe, we're going to see a huge shift in a different direction. You'll obviously have your Potters, right? Bringing in the money. But then you're going to get some other awesome, you know, lands, even Monsters Land, you know, if we get that as it's supposed to be, that'd be, you know, you have your whole separate crowd that, you know, are fanatics with that, that would go to that. So it just takes time, right? But but at the end of the day, you know, how much money was it they made on Butterbeer again? Didn't, oh, just a couple of quid. Made, yeah, like, just a few. I think yeah. they made the money that they spent on the land back in something like five years in yeah. just in Butterbeer sales alone. Crazy. Which is mental. <laughs> Even the wands. Like, I literally yeah. found a wand in... Uh, when we were moving, I found a wand that I bought when the land first opened and it was 1999. Like it was <sighs> price tag is still on there. It's not interactive, but you were saying the land opened in 1999. I'm like, no, 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 no. No. Like the price was like 20 bucks, something like that. It was super cheap. Yeah, that now I don't know how much are the non-interactive 50. wands. <clears throat> uh, 40, I think. And the interactive are 50. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's insane. And how many wands do they sell every day? Yeah. And you, people with the cloaks on and- yeah but at the end of the day i'm happy for it because if we didn't have that right like yeah. i'm a huge like fan of the land obviously i'm not a nerd like you lee that reads everything twice <laughs> and i admit it no i admit it he calls me out all the time right um but if it wasn't for that we would not have what we have now and what we're going to have in the next few years so potter on man potter on all right i'm all for it i love potter potter is to universal what princesses are to disney yeah yeah Which, yeah. and that's okay you know i don't go to disney to meet the princesses but hey if that's what brings the money to them so that they can keep creating cool things that i like i'm all for it yeah exactly. yeah like if you're not a part of fan you still got to appreciate for what it is because that's what pays the bills for everything yep. else that you do exactly yeah if you're not cool. a Potter fan, walk inside Diagon Alley, get lost, and never find the exit like I did. <laughs> <laughs> it took him two years to find the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this train station. This is dumb. Let's go home. <laughs> look, it wasn't just you. The, the, we had, they were putting barkers out the front of it to let people know the Diagon Alley. <laughs> were, yeah. Which, that is mental to me. Right, before we take our usual ad break, we've got one last little clip to play, and that is, I've cl- called this one Partners. Partners? And I'm pretty sure he was in the producer club. I don't know whether he's listening at the moment, but I'm going to pass it over to our good friends, Nikki and Gabriel from the theme Aww. park. Hey, everybody, it's Gabe. And Nikki. From the theme, theme park, park duo. duo. And we also have Aaron here. Say hi, Aaron. Hi, Dan. And we want to... <laughs> Such a huge milestone. A happy anniversary to you, UOP. Yeah. We're really, really happy for you guys. We love you so much. And uh, we wanted to kind of give our thoughts on how has Universal evolved over time. And I think a lot of it really can, can revolve around the one idea of media-based attractions. Yeah, and how they've dealt with that and incorporated the their IPs into attractions throughout the years. Yeah, exactly. And originally it was kind of more, you know, we, we see uh, rides like the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man where that media is, is mixed so well with practical sets. And then E.T. where it's all practical. Where it's all practical. Yeah. But I mean, you know, going to rides like Fast and Furious Supercharged where the entire experience is solely based on pretty much media. So it's interesting how they've evolved from how they've used media and at this point listening to the audience and realizing okay well the attraction doesn't need to be the media yeah. as much as the attraction needs to be supported by that media because it really seems like all their rides that use it in that way are enhanced as opposed to just being a screen that you're looking at the entire time i think that they've grown with the technology that's been available at the time and i think that that's really exciting for what is potentially to come in the future. So yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really excited about the future of Universal Orlando Resorts Attraction. So uh, thank you again for having us on the show. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. That's an interesting oh, point nice. about media-based attractions. Yeah. I yeah. think they did it with Forbidden Journey uh-huh. and Gringotts. And went, this is awesome. We can do anything uh-huh. we want. 
and then <laughs> down on it. Like yeah. Transformers as well. And then really doubled down on it and did. Didn't Fallon. notice. However you like it or not. Personally, I do. And mm. then did Fast what? And- oh, Fast and Fal- Furious. Oh. And then Fast and Furious. And then really got a revolt of like, yeah, we don't want this anymore. I can sit and watch this at home uh, yeah. on the TV. Yeah. And since. Mm-hmm. So born. It's not about the media, but the media enhances it. Hagrid doesn't True. have any media in it at all, I don't think. But the pre-show, I suppose, but the actual ride itself. Same with Velocicoaster. From what we see, there are screens in the queue, from what we can see, or potentially in the show building. But it's there to enhance, not to be the focus. Mm. And I think they've learned along the way that it's not about the media, like Nicky and Gabe both said. It's... It's not about that. It's about using that to make it better. Like for me, Forbidden Journey is the perfect amalgamation of that physical and screen-based thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I guess they had to get slapped on their hand real quick just to to make sure that uh, they didn't continue down that path. But I think I think they learned. I think they got, like you said, a big backlash from Fast and Furious. Mm. Um, whether you like it or don't like it, but that ride is terrible. And oh um, shout out to Creative, though. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I, thought- I don't. I don't think Creative was involved too much yeah. in that one. It was just like, let's clone. All the bean counters made that one. They're like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, but um, but yeah, I think they're heading back in the right direction. They're on the right track yeah. right now to to pump out rides that have a mixture of it, right? You don't need to go completely physical. You don't have to go completely, you know, CGI. You can have a nice mixture of them. I mean, even uh, Escape from Gringotts, even though it's primarily, you know, screen-based, there's a lot of parts of that ride that they were able to use physical and screen together to like fuse it and make it such a nice experience there. Um, And and you can still use that in rides in the future. Just do it right, Do uh, do a balance. I think that's what you need. Do we know if there are going to be any screens on Velocicoaster? Yeah, as I said, I think uh, I've seen footage of screens inside you of Raptors, but whether there's going to be, whether we don't know that show building, whether there's going to be animatronics in there or not yet. Mm. Okay. Because obviously if you're going to, if you're, if there are going to be hitting Raptors, you're not going to be able to do that physically. Well, no, because cool. you couldn't run fast enough to be fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look at Super Nintendo World with Super Mario, uh, Mario Kart, like that's the next evolution of screen based stuff. And I was actually quite impressed with how much that yeah. was physical mm. for a ride that is pretty much, you know, it's augmented reality. Yet the actual, yeah. I think you would quite happily ride that ride without the goggles on, and it still looks pretty cool. As just treat it as a dark ride. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see how much screens are implemented in what goes into epic universe that's going to be the big tell i think yeah so long as it's balanced i mean you can't you can't blame them for finding a win with the heavily screen based attractions oh, and yeah. going and running with it you, you do that until you get the masses going yeah enough now and then you you change tack yeah you and know? then you also have like the the scenario where they use screens because the money's not there to do things right the, we go back to transformers where there should have been a full-size Optimus Prime, yeah. which would have been amazing. We oh all know God. that. Nobody thinks it would not have been amazing. But to keep that, you know, the, the money involved in creating that and keeping that alive and keeping it yeah. going would have been astronomical as opposed to what they were trying to do. They're filling a building there. They're putting a ride in a space that's very small. And they are replicating, you know, this other ride over here. And they're just, you know, trying to do the best they can. And, and I think they hit it there. So balance give and take they probably looked at what the yeti is at expedition everest and when we don't want to become the butt Disco. of Park fans joke when our animatronic doesn't work Especially- oh my god but the kong but then they came out with kong and, and then just, the kong you know, is incredible though oh my god is. but technology <laughs> right technology different time periods you know what's there how cheap technology is you have uh, moore's law everything gets cheaper the longer the yeah. time period goes all that fun stuff so yeah i was gonna say to be fair though i do think that Optimus prime would dance disco better than the Yeti. That is probably true. Mm. Do the it has rhythm. Ha ha. That's funny for you. I can't believe we're only halfway through this thing, by the way. Wow. Right, we are going to take a quick ad break for those listening <laughs> to hear from our sponsors. Michelle, unless you want to do it live. 
for those of you, oh, thank you. For those that uh, are watching, I'm going to plug them because they're amazing. Uh, one of the best, um, I don't want to say bits of business, it's not really the same thing, but one of the best relationships that, that we've had since since doing the show has been that relationship with, and I will shout Robin because I know she's in the chat as well. Yep, Ooh. she is. Sorry, I keep dropping things. Robin and Michelle, it's just been a match made in heaven as far as I'm concerned. The weekend is testament to that and hopefully next year's will be just as good, if not better. Yes. I'll go and book a holiday. Now. Without a doubt. A lot to live up to, but yeah, it's going to be awesome. It'll be three times better. Yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is our 10-year anniversary of the Unofficial Universal Orlando podcast, and we're going to move on to the next group of clips. And I reached out to the people who I have had on as part of my Rides That Made Me segments. So I'm going to reach back into the very first one I did, and we're going to hear from the, the lovely Adam Bizark. Ah. Hey, guys, this is Adam Bizark wishing you a huge and hearty congratulations on 10 years. What, what, what? of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. That's an incredible achievement. And you guys have hosted some of the most interesting conversations in the theme park industry. The biggest change for me in the last 10 years has been the disappearance of a lot of the shows that I helped create at Universal. Ghostbusters was gone before you guys started. That became Twister in 1998. Uh, but you were around to say goodbye to the Jaws ride in 2012, Ooh. which was wonderful. And the real heartbreaker, T2 3D, closed in 2017. Uh, but the wonderful thing about theme parks is they just keep on moving forward. We miss rides like Jaws but Diagon Alley is amazing and I love all the little tributes to Jaws hidden around the land that adds to the legacy and the and the love so congratulations you UOP and here's to 10 more years Adam's awesome he was like yeah. he was more interested in me rather than talking about himself he's like what do you do it's a job do you do this for real it's just a hobby <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you it's just a hobby oh he's lovely um yeah those former attractions, like I miss Jaws so oh, much. Oh man, what I would give for one more ride. Yeah. I can do that. I can do She'll that. be gone quick. Yeah. yeah, she will. I like what he said there. That theme parks move forward. By the way, that was that was. Yes, they do, and they have to. Otherwise, yeah. it's become boring. Yeah. Otherwise, you have Disney. That's it. Very true. Just waiting for Robin to respond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> left. <laughs> But yeah, it's weird how like I think there is a there is a a place to have that old and new. But unfortunately, Universal, being as landlocked as they are, they don't have that space that Disney have. And whereas Disney now are, are, have got the beauty of having those classics, like we said, Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, Big Thunder Mountain. But then bring new stuff in like uh, Tron when it comes to there, and um, obviously Ratatouille over in Epcot and Guardians of the Galaxy. Universal don't have that luxury. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe in the future, they will have an upcharge ticket to ride an Oculus ride where you can <laughs> re-ride your old rides that you love. I'm really sure. That would be awesome. That's. I wonder if you can extremely doable. ride it on the Oculus right now. I guess not. Find out. Unless somebody's done podcast. You might be able to do the Japan one. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to put it out there right now. Get rid of Shrek and just put in a 3D virtual ride the old movies. That would be cool. That would be awesome. So just do can, that. It, can it be 4D instead of 3D? I mean, it could be 7D. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I got confused over this conversation the other day. What? what? Out, no one knows what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't worry. I didn't know what we're talking about either. All right, moving on. Next couple. Then they are a couple, actually. I'll put that together. Our good friends, Andy and Catherine. Oh! Hey, UOP. This is Andy D. Genova. And I'm Catherine Collins. And we wanted to send you a quick message to celebrate 10 years of the podcast. Lee was nice enough to ask us to chime in about our thoughts and feelings about how the Universal Orlando Resort has evolved in the past decade. So we're going to let ladies, ladies go first to talk about your thoughts. Well, it's obviously been quite a evolution of growth and change and continues to be a major player in the Orlando market and develop new attractions around the world. 
Yes, I agree. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I mean, it's it's really been awesome over the past 10 years to see how Universal Parks and Universal Orlando specifically has grown and just gotten more aggressive in its development, creating new attractions, new experiences, completely overhauling CityWalk. It's always sad to see some old favorites go. That's always the downside of progress and moving forward. So of course, we're always sad when that happens. But it is great to see just how much passion and attention the company has been paying to the theme parks business, because what that does is it just creates more experiences, more competition in Central Florida, it keeps Disney on their toes, which keeps Universal back on their toes. And it's really good for us as theme park guests. So really excited about that. Yeah. We just hope E.T. never goes anywhere. <laughs> yes. Never get rid of the E.T. adventure. Best right ever. Yes. So that's the that's the caveat. We, we'll support and applaud for the progress, but leave E.T. alone. Mm. So, yeah, those are our thoughts. But we did want to congratulate you guys on yeah. 10 years of the podcast. Congratulations, guys. That's quite an accomplishment. And we're so happy for you. And so cool of the community and family you have built around the Universal Orlando Resort and the Universal Parks. So happy to be just a small part of that family. Congratulations. Congrats. He has a voice that was meant to be on a podcast. That's yeah. why he has about four of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, holy podcast! It is the DC podcast. If that's what you want to listen uh-huh. to, the, him, Jamie, and Brenton are amazing. Andy and Catherine are. Are they two of my favorite people in the yeah. entire world? Even though they are halfway around the world at the moment. The thing what I found funny is how we met Andy was because we used to rag on Disney on the podcast. <laughs> they used to, so we still do now. Yeah. Um, it turned out at the time he was an imagineer for Disney. I kept, uh, <laughs> yeah. Emailing in saying, I'm disgusted at how much you rag on Disney on your podcast. <laughs> Whoops. I thought it was from the Minion fan fiction he would send you. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, uh, yes, but that is a good point. You know, it's mm. not just Orlando that Universal are expanding into. You look no. at what Universal Beijing is going to be. Yeah. The park looks, it's very That's exciting. similar to a lot of it's kind of a You should go, Tracy. <laughs> planning to <laughs> hey told you i looked at flights the other day it very much looks like an amalgamation of a lot of stuff from the other parks but it looks like a brand new theme park how often do you see a brand new theme park it, mm. not very often nope um and then nope. like hollywood's expanding massively and it's, you know yeah. it, 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 it's it is it's not universal are doing way more than what is just going on in orlando and that speaks volumes to how well the Orlando theme parks are doing because mm-hmm. they've seen there is money to be made in the theme park business. Yeah. So yeah. are we starting different podcasts for each one or what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, one are you going to head up, Chris? <laughs> I'll do the Beijing one with Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I get a sponsor to send me out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would be pretty cool, actually. I remember a day when we used to cover all the other I parts. was just thinking, yeah. And then I was like, no, no, we're an official Universal Orlando podcast. Let's get back to what we know. Yeah. Uh, right, wow. moving on. Someone, I don't think you were on this episode, Chris, but you've definitely spoken to him, but I've also done a ride, made, ride that made me. And this is the awesome Justin Martin. Ah, uh, yes. And the Universal Orlando podcast, it is me, Justin Martin. I just wanted to send over my congrats to you all for an incredible 10 years of podcasting and wishing you all the best for another 10. I'm so blessed to have been a part of this podcast in just a small, small fashion uh, and can't wait to hopefully be back on again and talk about more fun things coming from Universal Orlando. And I have to say really just the best things that have come from Universal uh, the last 10 years are the continual growth of uh, incredible guest experiences from obviously everyone's favorite Orlando Water Park, Volcano Bay, to Edwards Adventures Motorbike Adventure, Velocicoaster looks amazing, and whatever is coming down the line for Epic Universe, uh, I am hoping for another incredible 10 years, both from the parks, and can't wait to hear about those 10 years coming up from you guys here on the podcast. Oh, just seems awesome. Yeah. It really is. I know he's done a lot of things, but i that's Mr. Yeah. Volcano Bay to me. Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, that. I'm not a water park person. I said this to you, Michelle, when we went, but that place is oh, I'm going. absolutely stunning. I told you. I purposely took them on a tour of it because I didn't think I'd get them there otherwise. And yeah, sold them completely. I hate water parks too. So if you ever want to take me, just let me know. 
<laughs> I absolutely loathe them. Oh, this one's great. It's a water theme park. It is. But it is, yeah. We yeah. haven't spoken about Volcano Bay yet when we talk about Universal Orlando in the last 10 years. How are we not talking about Volcano know. Bay? I don't know. It's not as if you could miss it. <laughs> it's such a weird place. Uh, we've said for many times Universal, because they are in such a small space and they've had to really look at the space that they expand into, that they use that space so well. I've always said the prime example is the mini golf course. Mm. You know, that was, a, I think it was parking or something. And then they managed no, to I think it was just two, just wasn't it Valet Wasteland? Parking? Valet Parking used to be there. Or the I don't know. Or something. And put two 18 hole golf courses, mini golf courses in there that are amazing. Yes. Volcano yes, Bay they are. is squidged in the middle of those parks up against I 4. And yet, when you're in that park, you would swear that you are in the middle of a tropical island with nothing. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Yeah. It it's feels awesome. Huge. It's so good. It feels, I don't even want to say it, it feels way bigger than what it is. But, um, you know, it, uh, Unless you're on the top of a slide, then you yeah. can kind of see around. But once you're in there, yeah. these guys did such a phenomenal job at squeezing this little area to feel like this giant park because it does feel, you know, pretty yes. big, and um, and just uh, taking you to a different place in, yep. in your state of mind. And you're in the middle of the Everglades at that point, or the swamps, you know, in, in Orlando. Um, I mean, I four is literally right, right there. You right there. And the bridge, you go under a highway or yeah. under a main road there just to get into the park, but they were able to get you across this road without you even knowing there's a road there. It's just yep. light and these cool tunnels that you're going through. And, uh, yeah, they, they completely knocked that park, you know, out of the park <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm excited for the eventual future when they expand on those extra five acres of land that they have back there. I was hoping it was gonna be right, right away. Cause you know, I'll take more, but I can only imagine what they're going to do if they're going to wait a little bit longer, see what new technologies are out there and make some really cool stuff. But yeah, Justin is awesome. And the work he did there was really good. And the entire other creative team that was, you know, working mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. So awesome. With my paws dipping in the water, drinking a drink and just being there again. Yeah. I mean, so you talk nice. about like, going under the, the, the road and stuff. It's like, but they, they ha it's not just getting you in there, like under the road. They've made that the whole experience, the whole experience getting into that park builds the story of you mm -hmm. entering Volcano Bay. So you go under and the music's playing the little, and through that little tunnel, and then you're out into the entrance of Volcano Bay and you go through there. And then that whole like tropical walkway up to you round the corner. Yep with that big reveal of the volcano and it just, yeah, it's what Vol Diagon Alley is for Universal Studios Florida. Yep. That feel is Volcano Bay. It's amazing. Yep. You're killing me right now, man. It really is. <laughs> no one's stopping you going, it's Chris. <laughs> what? No one's stopping you going. I just renewed for two parks, not three, so. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Blasphemy. I, I know. I, I have my reasons. Um, and if things change for a different direction of things, I, I will gladly pay for a single day ticket. So trust me, if I can go to that park and be free as I want to be, I will go to that park and pay for it. Cause I think it's that good of a park as a pass holder. I will still pay for a single day ticket. Cool. There you heard it there first. That's big. That's a big recommendation there by Chris. Oh yeah. Cool. Right. The last one in this group is a good friend of mine, actually. Um, someone I had, we did, uh, I, I did, the, when I decided we were going to do for the producers club our this or that with Rick it's the most fun I have ever had doing one of those segments because it wasn't quick at all and it was what made me <laughs> oh, no. said, Do you know what just go yeah. it was hilarious Rick West Lee and Tracy and everybody at UUOP it's Rick West from Midsummer Scream formerly of Theme Park Adventure hey I want to wish you guys a very happy 10th anniversary on the podcast that is a uh, that's a huge thing to celebrate I, it's not lost on me what an undertaking that is so thank each of you for all that you do it's a lot of hard work and i am sure that your fans around the world would agree the world's a better place to hear you guys yapping in our ears all the time and and i really do i enjoy the podcast and so thank you very much for that and congratulations again 
And thinking of how Universal Orlando Resort has has changed since the last 10 years that you guys have been doing your thing, obviously it's Potter, Potter, and more Potter, right? <laughs> so, you know, them bringing on the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and uh, the way that it has spread through its subsequent attractions at the resort really have set the watermark for the, the industry as well as the expectations of fans around the world. And so we, we applaud them for that. And we look forward to the new innovations and new attractions and experiences that they're bringing online in the not too distant future. So that's, uh, that's my thoughts on the resort. Also, obviously, they are a leader in the haunted attraction industry on the East Coast and in the South with Halloween Horror Nights there in Orlando. So that's, uh, I think that's how they've done their 10 years. And you guys do your 10 years. And you know what? I'm looking forward to 10 more years. How's that work on your plate? <laughs> yeah. We can have a drink and some laughs. And you guys be safe. Take care of one another. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Ricky's awesome. Oh, if you ever want to meet anyone that can talk more than I can, that is your man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would happen. <laughs> it, put it this way. It got me through lockdown when I did that ride that made me with Ricky. Yeah. It was, we had such a blast. He is awesome. But yeah, he brought up Halloween Horror Nights. You know, how we not talked about Halloween Horror Nights? I know. It's like major. Is it fun? It's all right. Uh. Yeah, I've heard it can be. <laughs> the one I check it out. It's killing me at the moment of not knowing about our trip this year. If it yeah. was any other year, I'd just be like, you know what? Just put it off till next year. It was Halloween Horror Nights 30 and it's killing me. Yeah. I just don't. There's too much uncertainty. I just don't know because <sighs> that event is amazing. Yeah, just come over. We're it's... quarantined for two weeks. Lose your job. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you know, you have to worry about quarantine and coming back as well, Link, because you've lost your job. So. It's just yeah. a job. I mean, whatever. You can uh, be a yacht captain. So <laughs> yeah, be awesome. Yeah, you know, I keep saying about visas. They've got to catch us and find us to send us up. But year in year, that out, is a joke. Halloween Horror Nights <laughs> win haunted attraction. Yeah, around the world, not just it's... in Orlando. It's look, I know we complain the conga lines and all the rest of it, but there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that because it is as popular as it yeah. is, because it is as good as it is. It, it's one of the best things I've ever, ever done, and especially coupled with an RIP tour. Especially when you've got some squeaky girls in your group. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't make Who, it who Chris? Robin made my trip, so yeah, I'm the squealy girl. <laughs> but the other squealy girl's Robin, which I love. Just following her in that conga line. <laughs> Me, Darren, Chris, and Tracy, who were just like, oh, I like that set piece. That's yeah. impressive. Like, not a scare in the slightest. Like, oh, oh, sorry, we you trying to scare me? Oh. Yeah. And then you first that with Robin, Michelle, Zoe, Claire, Claire. Naomi. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, Naomi, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember the, her first house. That was hilarious. She didn't swear at me, but... I did. So many oh. expletives. She actually said, I think one of the first set of words that came out of her mouth was, how is this fun? Why do people pay money for this? <laughs> I just remember which house it was that Michelle was basically face planted into my back the entire time. <laughs> All of them. All of them. I can't remember the first one. I can tell you where it came out and it was like, a, it came out of a door on the road and it was a ramp immediately right. And obviously we went through multiple times. Monsters? <sighs> Could have been monsters. Maybe depths of fear i can't remember but i remember falling out of that door dying laughing <laughs> just because of the way you'd been all the way through it it was so <laughs> funny i'm pretty sure the people the, the staff members stood at the end at, at the exit were not expecting me to fall out the door <laughs> howling <laughs> laughing <laughs> that's the reaction they were going for <laughs> It's so funny. You get so people funny. Like us going through though, and we're just like they're jumping out trying to scare, you and it's like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, well done. They, they probably don't like people like you. Love the makeup <laughs> man. Looks they awesome. love me. Of course. Yes. <laughs> they gravitated towards you doing uh, scare actor dining. Hmm. I think they like they must have walkie talkies throughout the house, and they're like, hey, go for the girl in the black jacket <laughs> <laughs> with the pink sneakers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to see how it goes this year, to be honest yeah. with you. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. I think that's the thing. I don't think it's going to be normal. No. But I want 
meant to be normal. All I'm saying is Beetlejuice. <laughs> I need Beetlejuice. It's those icon, the icon house in yeah. the anniversary house of the two that are going to kill me. I would love to see Jack wearing that Jack face mask. That, that would they be sell in the parks. Yeah, that'd be yeah, funny. That be I think cool. that'd be yeah. hilarious to me. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We will move on to the last, well, kind of the last group. It's kind of split into two. But okay. it's the last group I've got on here, and I put this this next group down into just just other other guests, other people we've had on the show. Um. So recently, talking of Halloween Horror Nights, someone who worked on something we all adored at Halloween Horror Nights 29, and that was Marathon of Mayhem. Andy Garfield. Hi, this is Andy Garfield, composer of Men in Black, Alien Attack, and Marathon of Mayhem, Halloween Hornets, Lagoon Show. Wanted to wish the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast a very happy 10th anniversary. And I think my favorite additions to the resort in the last 10 years have been the Harry Potter lands and attractions. And it's just fantastic environments. Dagan Alley is one of my favorite places in the whole world. And uh, the Lagoon Show, Marathon of Mayhem, is fantastic. And uh, cinematic celebration, great shows little biased but anyway <laughs> uh happy 10th anniversary and uh, here's to many many more he's not wrong like marathon of mayhem is hands down one of the best things i've seen in the theme park. yes I've how many times did you cry during that one lee oh, enough oh. <laughs> <laughs> cry before it started yeah. <laughs> to it quite a lot in the last few days actually um yes you have it is stu- it is stunning I didn't yeah. have high expectations based on past lagoon shows and but this one was incredible not not the most recent ones I, I don't know if it's an upgrade in technology or what but you know years ago weren't so great but marathon of mayhem oh my god incredible yeah they just kicked it up to another level yeah that show it yeah. was I mean using the surrounding buildings and you know Man. Using yeah. the lights, the water, all that stuff. I mean, they they knew what they were doing. They were just getting you yep. in the palm of their hand and just, just squishing it. Yep. Yeah. So good. One of my favorite memories of the weekend. Uh-huh. Just being in that big group. Well, both times, the RIP tour and and then on the Saturday night yeah. when we did it. Just a big group of us. And it's <sighs> theme parks are definitely something that need to be experienced with many, many people. And it's just People talk about the community we have here and, and getting to share these experiences with that community is amazing. It is indeed. A yep. memory I will never, ever get rid of. Get rid of? Do you get rid of them? Do you have to lose, disappear, whatever? You hope. Yes. Forget, maybe? Forget, Forget yeah. There you go. Thank you, Chris. It's all right. It's just a dementia it's played up. Like half past yeah. um, right. Moving on. What the is? next one is someone we have had on. I have not done a ride that made me away. I'm going to do one with him at okay. some point. The guy who was one of the head creative team behind my favorite attraction of the parks, of the parks, at the parks. Uh-huh. Mr. Dave Cobb. Ah. Wow. 10 years of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast and over 30 years for the resort itself. And how crazy that place has grown and expanded i was really lucky to be there very early on uh, um, while i was still in college i took a trip there and saw the construction site and the model and then you know 10 years later i'm building an attraction there i was extraordinarily lucky to be connected to that place and help form what it's become today in the last 10 years though i think you can look at things basically through the the lens of the potter effect at how it's expanded right you have hogsmeade and the diagon alley and the hogwarts express and then more hotels and volcano bay and it's just become this really amazing place with so many options. It's and really, really wonderful competition to Disney, frankly, and not just about the theme parks, but about a place you want to stay. What I love about that resort is how compact it is, how you can walk everywhere, the landscaping, the beautiful waterways, the water taxis, all of it's so great. So here's to 10 more years of the Universal Orlando podcast and many more years for the Universal Orlando Resort. That is my worry when Epic Universe opens, that it is going to become, like, I love the fact that it is now, like, say, exactly like you said earlier, Michelle, that you stay on site and you're within, even if you're at somewhere like Endless Summer, you're like six minutes away from the resort on a coach. You can literally, you go, I've had enough in Ireland today, I'm going to walk over to studios or mm. I fancy going to Cowfish for my lunch and just walk out. Mm-hmm. You never 
more than 10 minutes away from anywhere on the resort and then you add epic universe in there and it becomes a different thing i am slightly worried about how it's going to affect the resort as a whole but it hasn't and, it hasn't detracted from disney at all you've parked up at, parked up to disney yeah but what a pain in the ass but it's but it's a different feeling at Disney. It really is. It's at Disney. There's the point where you're like, do I really want to have to hop over to Epcot? Cause that's going to take me, you know, you start doing all these calculations about how much energy you have to expend to go from A to B right at universal. You don't, that's not ever really a thought for me. You know, it's not, it's not ever difficult to get from my hotel back to city walk for a bite to eat or, you know, to hop from park to park. I trust that universal is going to do it right with Epic universe, although it's a little bit further away, it's still not as far apart as Disney parks are. Yeah. Um, and whatever, whatever that team has in place to connect that park to the current resort, I have complete faith that they're going to make it seamless. Yeah. It's just not yeah. going to be like, if you, you can go to universal Orlando as it is right now. And like I say, you get sick at islands, you hop over to the other one. If you're going to Epic Universe, you're probably going to do a full day there because it's not as easy. You're not going to go, uh, it's getting busy here. So we have a pop over to Islands of Adventure. It's not that simple. But it's also going to be a much bigger park. Yeah, that, as, as I mentioned, it's it's the right. same, you know, um, what is that word? Like not footing, but. Um, print? Print. Yeah, footprint, right? Same footprint as uh, the entire resort over there, right? We're talking mm-hmm. 500. Uh, Acres, yeah. Is it five, five hundred square yeah. miles, something like that, or something like that? Square miles, wow! Not not square miles, that. wow! Five. <laughs> acres, I think it's acres. Acres, sorry, brain's That's what not there right the end now. Of the day. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're talking about a much more massive resort over there, where I, I think it's going to be. I think it may even get to the point where it's like making the decision whether you want to go from like Universal to Disney, right? There's two completely different resorts that you're hitting over there Mm -hmm. because you have universal orlando resort which you know of now and if you have the same exact thing on the other side it's not and i'm just gonna skip over here right you're gonna spend all your time over there your resorts they're gonna be more hotels over there Mm -hmm. um it's gonna be two different experiences altogether i think it's gonna be something we don't even have right now as as we know of so it'll be interesting i think the execution is where it needs to be of of how they do it um and how easy it is to get between both resorts, I think, as well. Um, but I think it's going to be its own resort over there. I don't think it's going to be, you know, just all one resort together. They may just try to do, you know, something completely different. We'll see. It is going to be interesting. Very. I trust that Mike Halo is overseeing that thing, knows what he's doing. Let's be honest, yeah. Michelle, you said it before, everything that man touches turns to gold. He's yes. done a few <laughs> things. So yeah. Yeah, you know. all right, isn't he? Um yeah, I trust him. <laughs> I think, you know, even having spoken to him, I'm gonna name drop now, having spoken to him about it at the weekend. Ew. Wow. Like if we can pull off what we are planning on pulling off, it will be unlike anything anyone's ever seen before, which is like uh, trying to get your head around that. I know. Part, it's like what does that mean? I think we'll that, have to wait like, and see. It's gonna be bizarre. Mm. somebody in the chat said that we should have the night bus taking us between the parks that would be awesome (laughs) (laughs) yes right i appear to have lost the chat here is a voice we have not heard on anything for a long time um (laughs) a real blast from the past mr derek bergen everyone oh Hey, everybody, Derek Bergen here, and I was graciously asked by Lee to give my thoughts on the last 10 years of the Universal Orlando Resort, so I immediately agreed. Uh, I spent an inordinate amount of time coming up with my lengthy list, and then I was given the follow-up directive by Lee that it has to be one minute in length, give or take, and this is a quote, five seconds. But how can I reduce my thoughts to just one minute on all the amazing changes beginning and ending with Volcano Bay in my mind, but you also have all the awesome hotels. You have the amazing stuff in the parks. You have the great changes in City Walk, like the Mini Golf Hot Dog Hall of Fame, a press penny machine in the store with Jaws on it. I mean, just absolutely crazy. Back to the future! Back to the future in a press penny machine in the future. That's just a tip of the iceberg. So I'm going to go through my lengthy list. I don't care what Lee says. I'm going to spend as much time as it takes and we're going to go alphabetically. We're going to start anyway, with... Cut you off there, Derek. We can't go through that whole list. <laughs> he actually left it there. Yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> the podcast space is very poor for Derek not being around anymore. <laughs> he is certainly a tour de force, that man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tracy's speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Was that was funny. Listening to that message when he sent me. I was kind of wanting to hear the list. I mean, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Derek was at our our first uh, big meet at 2013, wasn't he? Did the kitchen sink challenge? He did, and failed miserably. Even we all did. Bigging himself up that he was going to complete it. Well, we all said that. Because <laughs> you're still going to try it, aren't you? I'm. I'm doing it again. Third time's a charm. Chris, if she fails, she'll do it again. It will. And again. No, no. Katina's no. too doing? good. Mid-tab- Actually, we do need Katina with her <laughs> to yeah. do that challenge. Oh. We can do some, some training for you. Yeah. No, I do like Katina. Anyway, mm. there's Derek. He didn't really say much, did he? M- he behaved himself. Head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Press penny machines. He's all about that. That was fun. I'm, I'm with him. Press penny machines are the a future. Harry Potter one now in the new store, apparently. There I need a there's penny. a penny. A uh, Harry Potter press penny? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to let Alexa know because uh, she has a giant collection of those. Awesome. Oh. There you go. There's three mm-hmm. different ones in the uh, the new Universal store. Okay. There we go. I got to make a trip. I need to get some wallets. Moving on, because there's not much to comment on Derek's there. Clear <laughs> <laughs> comes out. Someone else who has been mentioned tonight, but we haven't heard from him in a very long time, actually. Okay. Jim Hill. Ah. Dear Lord, has it been 10 years already? Lee and company, it's Jim Hill, and I just wanted to send along a quick congratulatory message on the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast reaching this auspicious anniversary. And I got to say, you picked the right decade to get into the talking about the Universal Orlando resort business. Ever since the original Wizarding World of Harry Potter opened at Isla's Adventure back in June of 2010, it's been the two Universal parks in Orlando that have been driving all of the additions and expansions at Central Florida's other theme parks. I mean, let's be honest here, guys. If Disney hadn't been looking over their shoulder at Hogsmeade Village or Diagon Alley, do you think we would have ever gotten Pandora, the World of Avatar, or Star Wars Galaxy's Edge? And the beauty part is, you and the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast team have been right in the thick of things for the past decade, keeping us abreast of all the changes that have been happening at that resort. More importantly eyeballing all of the epic additions are about to get underway across the way from the Orange County Convention Center. Thanks for all your hard work, Lee, and for occasionally letting me get in on the fun. Again, congrats on the 10th anniversary of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Here's hoping this is very entertaining and informative show goes on for many more years yet to come. Yes, Julie's just mentioned there that was it was because of Jim that our teeny tiny little podcast hit mainstream news a few years yes, ago. Yes, I still have I all remember that. Thought. I was the like, Harry Potter thing. Yeah, uh. it was so weird when I'm searching all these like major news things and we're getting mentions and they're like, "What the hell's going on right now?" <laughs> Bizarre. I mean, it didn't turn out to be true. I only said, "Oh, Michelle." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jim was like Jim. We had Jim on all the time. I was remembering he reached out to us for the first time to come on as well. Yeah. Um, but he's right. That's the thing. Universal's legacy. It's not just about Universal Orlando Resort. It's about Disney as well. They're affecting everything around them at this point. Oh, there you go. Yep, I have all the screenshots, hundreds that's, of them from around so the world, cool. Russian and everything. So just bizarre. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like you said, Disney, would would Disney be doing what they're doing if it wasn't for Universal and what they've done with Hogsmeade? Probably not. No. I mean, they 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 set they set the uh, the tone and everybody kind of ran with it. They saw how successful that was and they saw the money coming in, and that's all it takes. Well, in fairness, wasn't Pandora like <laughs> like supposed to have been built many moons ago? Yeah, many, but... many moons ago. Well, that's just because they take 10 years to build one ride. <laughs> yeah. So true. Um, I think it shows you that how well Universal are doing it, that Disney are panicking. They forced, not forced, but Disney looked at what they were doing and reacted to it. it shows that Universal are doing the right things because you Disney don't panic at anything. They don't really look at what everyone else is doing. Like, eh, we don't need to 
to react to that. But the fact that Universal are doing these things and they've have made Disney take a look at what they're doing says they are going in the right direction. Yep. And all yeah. of us get to benefit from this competition and it's great. Yep. Because mm-hmm. Galaxy's Edge is incredible. Oh, I cannot wait for that. Yeah, I'm still I'm still waiting to get there, but yeah. I'm still waiting to ride Rise of Resistance. They don't want to ride it in California because apparently the COVID rules over there, they're only allowed attractions, indoor attractions under 15 minutes and apparently Rise of the Resistance is 18. Oh, oh God. Really? We're talking about actually having to change the ride to get it open. Oof. I don't know how you do that with something like that, but okay. Why does COVID not last, not not live under 18 minutes? Is that how that, <laughs> yeah. is that the new CDC? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Good uh. Lord. Californians right. <laughs> moving on we've got three more left in this and then we're getting very close to the end of this I can't believe it so wow. a good friend of ours and uh, Halloween Horror Nights alumni Mr. Kevin Vincent ah. hey unofficial Universal Orlando podcast this is Kevin Vincent former Ted Theater Logan in the Bill and Ted show at Halloween Horror Nights I did a few other roles in that show over the years as well as Barney the Dinosaur in a day in a park with Barney in 1995, sad to see that show and venue close. You know, Lee asked if I would comment about Universal over the last 10 years, and I'll say, when my wife and I are walking through Universal Studios and we hear the Back to the Future music or we hear the Jaws theme, and we see this excellent Universal Studios retro merchandise featuring all these former attractions, to us it's just a sad reminder of how great this park once was. Now, of course, over the last 10 plus years, Harry Potter has been killing it in both parks. But I would just like to see the other parts of the parks step their game up to that level as well. And I will say Halloween Horror Nights is still amazing. You know, I went to the first Halloween Horror Nights back in 1991 when it was called Fright Nights. And I had the honor to be a part of that event over the years. And then now just as a fan, it's still a great event. And I will say congratulations to the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast on 10 years. Here's the 10 more. But most importantly, be excellent to each other. (laughs) Oh, that's the only so nice. we've met, we bumped into Kevin at Halloween. We Horror did, as yes, well, we? we did. Back in uh, in 2015. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, he said something that I was going to comment on, and it's gone out my head now. Amping up the game in all the other areas of the park. Yes, yes. It's yes, something we, we said. It. Um, it did feel for the longest time that that. Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade got all the love and that everything. I've seen comments on Facebook pages and stuff of people going, the Potter stuff was awesome, but the rest of the park looked run down. And it's definitely not at that level. No. But no. Um, you can definitely see where the money really goes. But then you look at the Velocicoaster now, and that looks like it's had no expense spared on it. It is the Jurassic World equivalent of Hagrid. And just to go back to, like, I guess when – so. Was it 2008 that uh, Potter opened? 10. 2010, right? So the parks were not in the best shape back then, right? We had a financial crisis, a meltdown in the entire world. Mm-hmm. That came out because they were working on it. And they're like, let's finish it off. And then they saw the money coming in from that. And as being, you know, Universal, NBC, I don't think it was even NBC back then, right? It was still Universal. Uh- was it Comcast. Comcast now. Or Comcast. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, anyways, they saw the money and they're just going to dump the money right back in there to get as much return as they can. Right. So they spent, we mentioned it earlier, they spent all that time building it up and making money and making money. And now we're seeing the benefits of that, whether it's, you know, 10, 12, whatever years later, where they have money now that they can flex and go, okay, you want a Velocicoaster? Here you go. Here's a full fledged Velocicoaster. Right. So, it could be one of those things. I mean, us as park fans, we'd love to blue sky everything with, you know, no yep. budget, whatever. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the reality kicks in and we're like, okay, so you have to pay with money. Oh, all right. <laughs> and so I, I think that's kind of where that, you know, game plan was from. But like I said before, I think we're seeing, you know, everything not being all Potter, Potter, Potter. They're, they're focusing on other IPs and other things, even in their commercials and everything. So I think that's where we're going to be seeing, the direction of the park go plus i think universal also sees what you know warner brothers is is doing with their potter stuff in other areas of the world and they're like okay let's not just be all potter over here let's let's 
make sure we can uh, expand and be other things just in the event. I don't know if Potter didn't exist anymore, what would happen to Universal? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's return on investment, isn't it? That's why they put the money into Potter because you spend the money to get the money back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you look at like Fast and Furious look like a bit of a, we want to put a new attraction in. It won't cost us that much because the R and D's already been done over it. Um, in Hollywood, the same with Kong, but then you look at Kong compared to Fast and Furious and it's night and day, mm-hmm. the, even though they're virtually the same attraction. Um, you know, Fallon won't cost them that much in. So you see they put these cheaper attractions in and save the money to then be able to go in and put it some Hagrid's into, into Hogsmeade. And mm-hmm. now with the Velocicos, like I say, it looks like it's on the same level as what they've done with Hagrid. It looks amazing. It's 100%. That land. And hopefully we will continue to see that move forward. I mean, even Bourne, I don't think a lot of people, we, we haven't seen it yet, seen no. sneak peeks and stuff of it. Um, but I'll be honest, from what we've seen, I cannot wait to see it. I know, I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's, it's an amazing show. It's an amazing yeah. show. Like, they killed it with that show. Um, it's it's a show that we still go to the park now and go, do you, do you want to go watch it? Like, not like, do you want to yeah. go watch it? It's, do you want to go watch it? Like, you know, let's go do it. Yeah. And unless it's like super yeah. crowded, you know, we'll go watch it because it's that much fun. And and we enjoy taking, like, it's such a great show where we enjoy just taking other people to go and see it and be like, you're going to see this amazing show. Come on. I took my parents and they were blown away by the show. And, you know, it's, so they can do it. They still have the magic there, but, you know. And again, it shows they can take an IP that everyone was like, what we ranked on it like crazy over here we We ranked on it so hard and i you know uh, whatever i'll take the i'll take the uh, the abuse after that but uh it's worth it make any sense but that hasn't been a bomb film for like (laughs) how many years and everyone was like oh my god it is yeah but the show needed that franchise like it needed that franchise in order to display all of the different technologies that they use i don't i can't i can't think of another franchise that it would have worked as well with Bond. You could have done. Uh, you could have done Bond. You could have done like uh, what's the Jason uh, Statham one? Uh, Driver. No, Transporter. Yeah, Driver's <laughs> right. a video game. That's a video. Yeah, game. All of those. I mean, there's nothing new. Like we're ragging on it because Born was like an old thing. Yeah. There's nothing like yeah. new out there. It's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait for you to cry like crazy after watching it, Lee. Oh well, I <laughs> because I, I missed Terminator Two 3D as well. Yeah. No, you'll you'll love it. Yeah, this is one of those like replacements of Jaws for Diagon Alley where it's like, uh, it's we'll, okay. we'll accept it. Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Our second from last clip of uh, our other guests. And this is a guy I was, when I, it's, it was sad, the circumstances that happened. But as soon as he got laid off from Universal, I was like, <laughs> hell yeah, I need to collect the okay. The one and only Mr. Patrick Breland. <sighs> Hi, everybody. This is Patrick Braylord, former creative development show director for Universal Orlando. And I am so happy for Lee and Tracy on this amazing accomplishment of 10 years for the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Congratulations, guys. You have done an amazing job bringing the world of theme parks to the masses in such a wonderful, enthusiastic manner. And I cannot wait to see what the next 10 years holds for you. There are many things that have changed over the last 10 years, but I think the thing that is most important about Universal Orlando is the attention to detail and the commitment to the overall guest experience. That's something that um, that is truly special about that place. All the love, guys. And again, congratulations. Patrick is so nice. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I was so glad like, he was always like, I wanted all the Halloween Horror Nights creative team. And Patrick was like, we got Charles uh-huh. and we got Blake and we had Mike and we got Laura. And it's like, we never, ever got Patrick. Yeah. So like, I know it's sad that all the layoffs and that, that happened to COVID, but it's like, from my point of view, I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the silver lining. You now what you fancy coming on. Like, I'd love to. <laughs> But he's right. I'm sure that's what he was thinking too. As soon as he got the news. Yeah. Yes, I can be on UUOP <laughs> now. Exactly. <laughs> Finally. I've been waiting for them to fire me. Yeah, but he's right. The overall guest experience at Universal has increased massively from mm. the old days. Team members are amazing. It's the overall experience is better. Yeah, you still get the odd one because look, everyone has a bad day. Of course. And no one's perfect all the time, but it's 
it was always Disney that set the benchmark for for cast members of being this sort of yeah. amazing guest service experience. And I think you get as good, if not better, at Universal now at times. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, they definitely stepped it up. I mean, the spews we've had through. Yeah, I Just... mean, the fact that they've even got their own hashtag you or fist bump going. Yeah, is testament that's awesome. To how, yeah. To how good the team members are there. And it's like, um, you look, it was always people's dreams. Look at Hunter. Hunter's a prime example. He always wanted to work for Disney. And uh-huh. I think that was a lot of kids' dream was to go and work at Walt Disney World. Yeah. I think since Potter opened and that guest experience at Universal's got better that you are starting to or you were starting to see more and more people go, do you know what? I want to work at Universal now. Because mm-hmm. from what I've heard, talking to team members we know, they treat their they treat their team members way better than Disney do. And when you yeah. have a boss, a company that you work for that, that values you, then that makes you want to go out and be better. And I think that comes across when you visit the parks. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Disney last summer was a was a bit different when it comes to cast member morale and the magic that you kind of expect um going to disney i don't know exactly where that came from but um it must be something behind the scenes with like you said with how they're how they're being treated through this whole experience uh, i don't know but i did not experience it at universal universal has been fabulous the the way the team members have um have rallied and kept up their spirits it's been good yeah, I mean, you you can see it just talking to people when you're getting off a ride, just the way they talk back to you, the way like their 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 attitude is. Everything kind of tells you, hey, you're having a good day. You know what I mean? Like it, mm-hmm. whether there are whether they are they aren't right. It still kind of shows that even to the point where you know when I go to the parks, um, for some reason we always bump into Kenneth, you know. Yeah. And um, whether that may be because we're directly walking that way to look for him or just because we're walking by, you know, but even all like the uh, the crew that works with him there and everybody, everybody's just talking. They're just they're, they're just it, they, they, it's 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 kind of the vibe that they give you. Right. It's just a very nice, calm kind of they're kind of happy to be there. I mean, as happy as you can be to be at work. Right. <laughs> but but they are they're, they're not miserable. Let's just say that much. Right? right. And that that goes to show kind of it comes from leadership. Right. It's always the way an employee is going to be. It comes down from leadership, the way you are treated. And yeah. that goes from your higher ups, goes down to your team leads, goes down to your next level. And as long as you have a nice kind of flow going on there, the right attitudes, um, you're going to get that there. And I think I think Universal's been doing a really good job at that for the most part. They have. Yeah, and I just see that during COVID, that they seem to be doing the better job in park as well. I mean, I don't know, but just from what I've heard, obviously you you guys have experienced it firsthand. But it seems to be that overall, Universal seem to be handling COVID better than Disney are as well. I don't want to keep ragging on the two, but obviously that's the comparison. Mm-hmm. I I don't know because I haven't been to Disney, but. Um... <laughs> I just haven't gone. Uh, well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to no. keep ragging either, but it's, but it's kind of true. I mean, in my experience over there, the few times that I've been during COVID, it's, I don't know, the way that they approach misbehavior over at Disney seems to be a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but crass, like they just have an, an attitude about it that makes you automatically want to, you know, fight back a little bit. Whereas <laughs> Universal, they they'll get on to you, but they do it in a nicer way, which is weird because it's usually kind of the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's like cheerleaders out in Universal. Yeah. They're like, that are just with like, the signs. Like, yeah, they have the signs <laughs> like they have like an entire team developed for for like, you know, enforcing rules and stuff like that especially now during the last year obviously but they do it in more of a positive way yeah like there's people in front of the parks on microphones just talking about the day and how much fun you're gonna have but they're like super nice about it and they're like tell you really nicely to put your mask over your nose yeah which sounds like such a weird thing to like you know talk about but obviously it is where we are right now and i think they do (laughs) such a really good job like and it's really good for both you know whoever you are right it, it, they do it, they enforce it really well, but they don't do it. Like I think Michelle said, it's not in like this nasty way. It's just kind of like, Hey, this is what we got to do. Let's do it together. And that's it. And everybody's like, okay, cool. And let's continue moving forward. Yeah. 
I mean, Johnson's brought up a good point. So the virus handling debate is a matter of perspective between Walt Disney World Universal and said Walt Disney World's under more scrutiny than Universal is, and that's probably true. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. We will see. It will be very interesting to see who comes out of this pandemic, uh, the higher thought of the two. But I think I like to say Universal certainly have not done themselves any harm. No. Mm. I think they've handled it beautifully. Yeah. Right, moving on, our last clip in this penultimate section is someone we have, we had him on a lot in the space of a short amount of time. Okay. He's more known for Disney than he is for Universal. Ah. Oh. But he is a talker, and we haven't spoken to him in a long time, and that is Ron Schneider. Ah. Unofficial greetings to Lee and the staff of the Unofficial Universal staff. Orlando Podcast. <laughs> Congratulations on this, your 10-year annual university. This is Ron Schneider. <laughs> former creative supervisor and show writer for Universal Studios Florida and veteran of the myth that was Hollywood East back in the oh-so-gay 1990s. The Universal Studio tour on the West Coast was inspired by the creative vision and financial success of one man, namely Walt Disney. But in their determination to get their feet wet in the theme park biz, they've not only established themselves as a true creative presence in the industry, by wisely giving jobs to every former Imagineer they can find, but also set new industry standards for squeezing every cent they can from the guests' pockets. <laughs> In so doing, they've also inspired their Florida neighbors to new heights of technical and artistic expression and forever change the industry. On the other hand, there's Fast and Furious Supercharged. <laughs> <laughs> I literally howled out loud oh my God. to the end of that bit. Where's the lie? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that was awesome. Fast and Furious isn't that bad. Yeah, it is. It's not it really bad. is. It really is. He's yeah. sorry. <laughs> the only time I've enjoyed riding it is when we went on as a group and took over the ride. And that wasn't it. That was it. And I wasn't there for the ride. I was there for the people. Yeah. I don't mind it, honestly. It's not the best thing in the world. We know you love it. It's not the, I, I love it. You have done. I have not. Yes. It's not the worst thing in the world. There are worse attractions at Universal. When, when the review comes out saying, I don't mind it. <laughs> yeah. The funniest thing when we got off it and we knew we were doing the live review afterwards, Chris was looking at me. He's like, go on. I was like, I'm not saying anything. He went, he liked it. I told you, Darren. I told you. <laughs> it was out of spite. <laughs> It wasn't. Oh, I didn't mind it. Like you say, my Weird. opinion of it could have been tainted by the fact that we had a whole bus to ourselves. We had a both pre-shows to ourselves. It was, it was, a, it was a tainted ride, man. It was. It, that's not it was. how that ride is. Like we had a blast. If your first had ride had been in had been in February last time you were there, as opposed to the weekender, I think your attitude would be totally different. Probably. Uh, yeah. I remember Tracy's face next to you, like while you were saying that, she was just kind of disgusted at you, but she was, <laughs> she was so upset. <laughs> the thing is, I think people thought I was doing it to just be contrary, but I wasn't. Yeah, we know you're just a freak. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to the final little section of clips we have. Now, when I started this podcast back in 2011, there were people I wanted. I had a wish list of people. Someone's already asked, is there anyone you wanted on the show that you didn't get? Um, at this point, yeah, I would love to get um, Mark, who's the head of Universal Creative at this point, Mark Woodbury. Yes. Um, oh, yes. I would love to get Mark Woodbury on the show. Um, but when I set out to do this, there was one person that I said, when I have that person on the podcast, if it ends at that point, I will end it happy. Is that me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to end up one show. <laughs> Over the last couple of years, we have built quite a relationship with Universal Orlando. Ali, who was in the chat earlier, is someone I want to give a huge shout out to. I think she's, she's amazing. Point, but if she's still there, Ali, I want to give a huge shout out to you. That The relationship that we have with Universal and with yourself um, is one that I cherish so much. And it's been amazing watching that relationship grow and, and getting to meet you, go for dinner, like go for lunch. At, yeah. At, um, the Today Cafe and just and just build that relationship. And through that relationship, we have been able to have some universal creative members on the show. And I am going to play the clips that Ali procured for us. So the first one is a very good friend of ours. At this, this, at this point, this could be anybody. <laughs> Mr. Blake Braswell. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lee. It's Blake Braswell from the Universal Orlando Resorts Entertainment Team. Congratulations to 10 years of your show. 
I am sure it has brought you a ton of great memories while following along with what's been happening here at Universal for the past 10 years. And I am so glad that my work here has allowed me to meet the two of you and join you on a few of your episodes. Thank you for always being a blast to chat with and for being so much fun when we finally got to meet in person. Tracy, I especially thank you for dealing with Lee and I talking away about soccer every time we get together. Uh, one of my favorite memories, uh, as a matter of fact, is uh, of Lee recording a personal video blog, giving me a tour of his beloved Darlington Football Club. I can't wait to see a match in person with the two of you one day. That is definitely on the bucket list. Yes. But congratulations again on 10 years of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. You all rock. I'll see you in the fog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love I love Blake so and much. And thank you for the neck sock. <laughs> Chris, I mean, yeah. how many Next Universal song. creative team members are you going to sit down with and not even talk about Universal and just talk about Batman v Superman for 25 years? Listen, man, like that was uh, that was one of the highlights of my uh, Hornets <laughs> was literally sitting down for an hour inside Café La Bamba awesome. talking about Batman versus Superman and just, you know, me and Blake ragging on you about how bad a movie that was. But, you know, no, it was he, he's such a, a personable character. Like he was he's yeah. a blast. Um, and then, you know, doing, you know, the interview and all that stuff and it, recording in the studio. There's just, um, yeah, it's just, it, he's, and the thing about him that, that I loved about him was that he is, he just makes you feel like you've known him forever. Like it was so easy to talk to him um, and just have a conversation. It was, it was great. And obviously all the work that he's done in the parks and, and, you know, bringing us, tons of stuff to not just enjoy but talk about and everything you know he's he's just he's a cool cat man he is cool yeah you know i like i class him as a friend you yeah know, we chat regularly now and it's i wouldn't have wanted to do that recording in the broadcast studio with anybody else no no definitely not no yeah. that kind of him, <laughs> but not really and the this next socks man the next socks yeah <laughs> it's just such a, a genuine guy and just easy to connect with and Kindred spirit, I think that's what it is. Yeah. No, and then there's a bromance. Oh, there's definitely a bromance there. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how embarrassed I was when I filmed that little vlog it because I didn't even know about this. Yeah. Him, him run and Ferris that and that like vlogging from the match. I was so embarrassed because like people look at me, what the hell is he doing? Wow. <laughs> right. Moving on. One of Blake's Halloween Horror Nights alumni. Who likes to rag on us the fact that we don't get to go to Halloween or night oh. time, Mr. Charles Gray? Hey, this is Charles Gray, senior show director for Universal Orlando Resort. I just want to congratulate Tracy and Lee, and yes, I did say Tracy first. The most <laughs> good, important good. one. <laughs> I think the most fun I have with the interviews is teasing both of you and being teased by you. It's a lot of fun. Um, as you guys like to say, I like to be cheeky, but uh, we both share or all of us share that uh, love of the horror films and the haunted mazes. Um, so I hope you come by soon. Congratulations again. Ten years. That is awesome. Yeah, we haven't actually met Charles in person. No, this needs to change. A bit of a shame, but yeah, he's awesome. I yeah. know you guys haven't spoken to him, but he's... Another genuinely easy to talk to guy. Just He's just normal, which... We are all just people at the end of the day. The view we do, it doesn't matter who it is, but when we've done like Charles and Blake and the two other people we're going to talk about in a second, uh-huh. they are literally throwing up beforehand. You are weird. <laughs> Michelle, have you done an interview yet? Uh, I think just as a guest host. Who? Never. Uh, oh, God. You were on for briefly when we had Jason Sorrell on. And you uh, had, like, yeah proper interview at this point i'm ter- i'm terrible at remembering names but the um i'm chris oh, come the on way. the the wizarding world girl what's her name it wasn't miss wizarding name. world miss wizarding world yes i was there for that debating diagonally i mean an actual sit down interview where the whole episode's focused on that person probably not then i guess right well then i'll break it to you next monday <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm a universal creative member, a good friend of ours. So yes. Ah, well, thanks. Thanks for giving me the warning. Well, I'll give you the warning. You got a week. I'm not the host, though, am I? Yeah. Well, can no. Be if you... no, no, I'm not the host, guys. 
the penultimate one, someone we haven't had on for a very long time. And Ali, we never get to this person anymore. And it's been years since we've spoken to her. But someone who is also part of the Halloween Horror Nights team, as, many, as well as many and many other things at Halloween Horror Nights, Tracy Strand. She wasn't even called the name she's called now when we had her on back then. Back then, she was known as Laura Wallace. Ah! Yeah, she was Laura Sauls. Sauls, yeah. Hi, Tracy and Lee. This is Laura Sauls from Universal Orlando's Creative Development Art and Design Team. I just want to say happy, happy, happy 10th anniversary on your unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. It's always great talking to you both, and we cannot wait to see you back in the fog at HHN 2021. Uh, Bye. Hopefully. Ah, oh no! Ago we had Laura she's so sweet. Yeah, oh, I mean, wow. she's she's like the female Mike Aiello at this point. Yeah, she? she's been there forever. Mm-hmm. Speaking of That's which, so cool. Mm. The last clip, of course, <laughs> the one <laughs> that I said I wanted on the podcast when we first started this thing, and we have had Mike on at least three times I think, oh, at, at least. this point. We bumped into him God knows how many times. Chris, if it wasn't for you, I'd have missed him when he walked <laughs> yeah. back. <laughs> Dump, and, uh, he'd had quite a few drinks at that point because he was slurring quite a bit. <laughs> but Makes he, him funner. Um, yeah. That is Mike Aiello. Tracy and Lee, this is your pal Mike Aiello from Universal Orlando wishing you a congratulations on 10 years of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. I can't believe it's been that long, and I'm so happy to have been a small part of that 10-year history. I think your podcast was the first one I ever did in my role here at Universal, so that's pretty cool. What a fantastic job you both have done, and uh, been a great friend, you know, right along with us as as Universal has evolved uh, over these last 10 years into what it's become. So great. Love to you both. And again, congratulations on this milestone. And uh, thanks for letting me be part of it. Goosebumps, goosebumps. There yeah. it is, Lee. Turn them on, Lee. You talk about <laughs> someone that has Universal Orlando running through their veins. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is He's Universal awesome. Orlando. Yeah. I still remember Big Fire. Yes. <laughs> Stuart, With, like, Stuart and Claire. I just went, all right, Mike. <laughs> we just went up and talked to them. And Stuart and Claire, like, what? But it's the same. Like, <laughs> summer's awesome. I was going to say, summer, oh, amazing. my goodness. Like, Caden is going to follow in oh, his wow. footsteps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's many Halloween Horror Nights right there. Caden yeah. was following summers as well. Yeah. Oh, my Did gosh. Yeah, they've created clones of themselves. I know. Such an amazing family. They, they yeah. are the people that you aspire to be in your life. So fun. Again, I keep using the word genuine, but they are just genuinely nice people. Yeah. You know, it's just, I just feel very blessed to have people like that in, in my life. And you look at Mike as well. If you ever, if anyone is ever like, I want to work at theme parks, like he is the example you follow. He started off working as a, a scare after at Halloween Horror Night, yeah. ended up getting hired as a Jaws skipper, got kicked off the Jaws skipper because he went off script too much. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, in other entertainment and now look where he is he's like head of epic universe it's like yeah wow yeah it's crazy crazy story it's amazing and yet he's still humble yeah after all that it, yeah it's certainly after not that. lost on him at all no no Def none of them yep well two hours in i didn't expect this to wow almost three hours and you're gonna have fun editing this for the oh good the listeners. <laughs> So that is going to wrap up 10 years of UUOP. Let Tracy get a drink. Everyone get your drinks ready. I've got a little bit left in the bottom. Ugh. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has listened, helped, uh, contributed in any way that you have over the last 10 years and been part of this journey. In 10 years, we've hosted three mini meets at Universal Orlando, a weekend event in the yeah. UK with our friends Lee and Sarah Haunted Hangout, yeah. a weekend event at Universal, thanks to Robin and Michelle, which again will go down as one of the best weekends, just weeks of my life. We are 449 episodes in plus however many bonus episodes yeah. and whatever else that we've done, you know. Um, and of course, Producers Club exclusives. If you want to hear us unedited, then that's where you want to be. Um, as we said when we went wow. on the producer club before, this producer club has grown every year and it's mm -hmm. become an amazing cult, I mean, community. Um, <laughs> but the one thing 
that yeah. I am so proud to say that I have gained from starting this podcast. And it's been mentioned tonight already a little bit. And I'm sure Tracy, Chris, Michelle will agree with me are the people that we now call friends because of mm-hmm. this podcast. I can feel yep. it. All. Oh, <laughs> yep. Yep. The yep. people that I class as my family now are all people that I know because of this podcast. And I'll tell you now, this is my, you can hear it in my voice. <laughs> really, I can see it. <laughs> get back over to all I normally get to meet you guys. This is my one swear. Michelle, get the bleep ready. <laughs> I am going to hug the shit out of everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this journey started, just me and Tracy. Yeah. But there's many, many people being a part of it. It is not just us. You know, Michelle and Chris, our course now, this is an awesome team. And I love mm-hmm. that we all are in this together. And I think we work amazingly as a team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, like you said, the, the the family we've made from from people on the podcast, um, just meeting people prior. There's way too many people um, that I've now just call almost family uh, mm-hmm. here on this podcast. Um, yeah, and it's it's such a pleasure. Um, I mean, Stuart sent me a picture with me with a wig on when we started this. Uh, <laughs> live thing. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Um, but yeah, no, it's yeah. it's just doing this and and the people we've gotten to meet along the way and just just being able to sit around and just talk about the thing that we love. Yeah. You know, it's not very often you get to do something like that. So it's, it's, it's a pleasure. And, and like he said, if no one was listening, I mean, it'd just be us talking to ourselves. So thank you for listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's been effortless, you know, all those friendships and family that we've made, it's not like we had to do anything to make yeah. that happen. You know, we literally just met up as if we'd known each other forever and it was amazing. And we don't just, you know, it's the weekender and even on, you know, private messages or, you know, in the groups, we don't just talk about universal, you know, we all relate in so many different ways now. And it's, and it's awesome. You know, we've shared our families, we've shared our, you know, so much, and it's just, it's just going to get better and better from there. I have people now because of this, that are my close, close friends that, have helped me through some rough times in my life because of it. And I thank that every day. I'm sure mm-hmm. at least two of them are in this are listening at the moment. You know, who you are. Um, so yeah, I just want to say a big thank you on behalf of all of us to every single person that has had any sort of it, whether you've listened or whatever it is. Thank you all so much. Cause as Chris said, without you guys, this is just the four of us talking mm-hmm. to each other, which isn't a bad thing. You know, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, we do it sometimes, <laughs> yeah. but you know, it's a lot better with more people around more, more of a party. Is managed to keep it fairly well you know, so but, everyone if you sorry Tracy go it's all right go on. no you just keep waffling go <laughs> no you know I just wanted to say you know thank you to everybody who's been a part of this and helped us grow and have, you know started to, yeah <laughs> <I've started laughs> as friends and I've become family and I've always said that that you you you're friends for a few minutes and then you're in my family you know and it's my family has grown exponentially over the last 10 years and to see how everybody else has forged their own friendships yes. and relationships. And it's just, I feel like a proud parent, to be honest. I've never had that feeling before. Um, oh, God. <laughs> sorry, kids. Yeah. I hope your children don't listen to this. Yes, they don't. And Jade's right next to her. She's like, oh. yeah, I got again, man. <laughs> no, but no, it's uh, you know me. I can't be serious for more than two minutes. Um, no, there's been a lot of hard work gone in, a lot of fighting going on behind the scenes, and you, you know, and it's no to to know that what we've done and what we've created is appreciated. It's it, it just means so much. It makes it worthwhile. It really does, because there's some 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 Mondays where I go, oh god, god, it's one. Monday again. <laughs> I come in from work. But then you get into it. And, and I think, oh, yeah. the last thing I want to do is sit down and talk yeah. about the theme, park, theme parks for the next two hours. And then an two hour minutes. in, it's like, it's... this is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> what we were supposed to do. Yeah. So everyone, yeah. if you have a drink, raise your glasses to 10 years of UUOP and another 10 more at least, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Salute. everyone. Salute. Salute.
How are me and Tracy the ones drinking alcohol and you two are the ones drinking water, by the way? Because there's a time difference. Yeah. More water real quick. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Do we all have our universal is Have we actually thought? Yeah, I've got one. Because I'm going to throw you under the bus, Chris. You're first. So anyway, <laughs> yes, thank you all to everyone who is watching live. It's been a blast trying to keep up with the comments. It's <laughs> yeah. been absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you to everyone who is listening. Thanks to everyone who has done whatever you've done, left us iTunes reviews, you've commented on the Facebook page, you've followed us on Instagram, whatever it is, you know, this whole community is is wherever you follow us. And so we are going to end this show like we always do, but slightly differently, with us giving you what we all think Universal is. I've put myself last because I haven't got one. <laughs> so... <laughs> My uh, so Universal is a bleep load of things to me, um, but I guess right now all I can say is Universal is my podcast family. Oh, yeah, Michelle. Oh, how are you supposed to follow that? Exactly. God dang. Okay. You now, messed like, up putting me first. Universal is bleeping awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. <laughs> Okay. Universal is past, present, future. Oh no, that is that's good. I, that's I the, the last right. final word, but the problem is I haven't. Yeah, we got one. <laughs> First time ever, folks. Cherish oh. this moment. <laughs> if I'd have had tears going on right now, because it would have come from the heart. But um, my happy uh, place. Why oh. I cry. <laughs> Do you know what? You're probably right there, Chris. It's one of the reasons why I cry. Universal is my everything, honestly. That is three. Yeah. I could clarify it, but it's just... Actually, I'm going to change it. Oh. Universal is my life. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for 10 years. Thank you all. Look forward to seeing you for 10 more. See you next week. See ya. See ya. Woo. <laughs>